Well, that's my cue now, isn't it? How is everybody? <coughs> How am I? I'm all right. I'm fine, except for the cough that happens from time to time. Doing well, good morning. There you go, there you go, there you go. Sweet. Well, oh, wait, I gotta get it. I gotta get my hat on. I gotta get my hat on. There we go. All right. <sighs> Tarkov is pain. Don't play it then. I, I mean, we went, I was gonna play Tarkov last night, and then I decided to play Beam and had a lot more fun. Just saying. Great win for Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. You're already at level 24, though. Some co Pray. Pray, we got a, we got a problem. Imagine all the other things that you could have been doing in that time. Discovery, go at throttle. Hey, dwarf man. Guess it's that time again. Twenty month reset. Thank you. Hey, was checking the vod. Happy birthday again. Now I have to install Beam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, Beam is good. It's a fun time. Crash was horrific. To yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I still think the Halo looks stupid, but. It saves people's lives, so <laughs> rather have it. <laughs> have it not need it, need it not have it, right? In this case we did oh did no he needed it. That would have ended very poorly. Alright. Shall we? Yes. Oh, hey, come here. And Gizby. There we go. How's your birthday? It's fine. Feeling better? Yeah, far night. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be okay. Ow, why did it play mid song? Stop that. Oh, this is where you last left off, right? What you get up to in being Beam and G? Uh, we took the the Hellcat thingamajigger, the Hellcat, not Hellcat charger, and we uh, we've made it go. What is it like nine something in the quarter? Hey, Vin, happy birthday! Thank you. Did you get <coughs> did you get sick? I had COVID last week. Yeah, the Battle Hawk. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I had it not long ago as well. Hope you feel better. Oh, I'm fine. I just cough intermittently. <coughs> like that. I'm fine. I'm good. Everything is a okay. Only nines, long way away. That was after like 30 minutes of tuning. Afternoon, hey, I heard you fixed, I heard you fixed your filler neck on the truck. How do you, oh yeah, I said that last night. I was like, how the hell do you know about that? I haven't told anybody that, but I did say it last night. Yeah, yeah, I was like, <laughs> How did I fix it? Um, well, the hose was... The hose was doing this. It was kinked down. So I hose clamped it to the bed. And now it works just fine. We are watching you. Oh, well, yeah. 
Duh, you're watching me right now. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Jay, are you okay? Are you having a strong? Uh, Dead Crew, did you get a message from me on Discord with a QR? Uh, <coughs> uh, the message was deleted by the time I got around to it, dude. Uh, Sawyer here, let, let me see if I can get you a picture. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of the bed. Uh, I guess, guess you can't. I just need an upside down picture of the one of the beds and I can show you. There's a little tab that you can hose clamp the filler neck to. Uh, and that fixes everything. It's, um, it's like right there on the underside. There's a little tab of metal that comes down. It's an L-shaped piece, right? And it, it's like right there, right in front of the flap. Uh, and what you do, so like you have the tank, right? And then you have the the metal pipe coming out of the tank, and then I have the tube. I bought the tube from Ford. It's 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 just the regular tube that goes in there. It, uh, and it elbows underneath the bed. It goes between the frame rail and the bed, and then it connects to a metal, the metal filler neck, right? That you put the gas pump into, right? And there's a part right where the tube goes, like, Tube goes over the sleeve, right? It goes over the filler neck, and then I hose clamp that, and it was just hanging there, and when it hangs there, it kinks, and you can't, it work, that ends up working like a trap on a toilet. So when gas fills up, there's no way for the air to get out. So what I did was I brought it up by hose clamping it to a bracket. Uh, I used just a radiator hose, and uh, I'll take pictures of it, dude. I'll show you. And that, um, that brought everything true, and then I went and filled it up at the gas station. Worked just fine. Worked like new. Yeah. Okay, dead crew, no problem. Hey, hired 42 month resub. What is this meaning? I don't know. Don't worry about it. Red Shock, 32 months. No, <laughs> drummer, not yet. Cool, because I can't fill up the tanks without babying the gas pump. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I'm trying to find a picture of a freaking bed. <coughs> so I can show you. <coughs> Sorry, I need something to drink. Discovery, go and throttle up. Um, it's right here. It's, it's like, it's right in line with the filler neck. I'm trying to, this is probably the best picture that I could see. It's, there's a tab. It comes down off the bottom of the bed and it's, it's C-shaped like this. This is the bed, right? And it comes down and you just got to pull the filler neck up and it'll pop right back in, dude. It works. Yeah, it worked great. That plate, though. <coughs> <coughs> Bith, 49 monther. Thank you. I mean, that's the bed. That's that's the exact bed that I have. Only mine's white. But yeah, that, that brought everything back into alignment, which is really good. I'm really happy because I don't have to baby it at the freaking pump. I was in Amarillo, Texas, Sawyer, and I was trying to fill it up, and the gas splurted back onto me, and coated me in gasoline and then spilled gas all over the uh all over the pump and i'm like wow oh. lovely 
Ah, beer. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta... You, you can't have the line kink, or else it works like a trap. Uh, but yeah, now I know, which is good. Oof, and that smell afterwards? I'm not gonna sit here and say that I don't like the smell of gasoline. I love... I love the smell of gasoline, dude. Not even kidding. You shouldn't smell it, it's not good for you. But man, does it smell good. Diesel fuel too. Oh, diesel. Mmm. Smells like candy. It doesn't. Just doesn't smell like candy at all. Jet fuel. Race fuel smells great. Meth methanol. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty. The <laughs> hypersonic. You know the smell that you get coming off of an airplane when you're on the jetway, you smell the diesel fuel, you, or you smell the jet fuel, I kind of like, I don't even, I don't even know how to describe that smell, but it's that, yeah, that's, that's, that's what diesel fuel smells like, because jet A and diesel fuel are very close. But it's different getting it splashed on you. I love that racetrack smell. Burned rubber with gas. That smells like hell. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, yep. VP Racing Fuel. Good man. Good man. It smells great. I don't give a frick what anybody says. It smells, it smells excellent. All right. Where are we? We were messing with the AP prototype right here. <coughs> yeah, guys, if I'm coughing a little bit, that's just the leftovers from COVID. I'll be all right. All right. So we were working on a payloaded fitting attachment mechanism. Uh. Oh, yeah, it smells great, Lemprod. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so... I think we're good for a baseline configuration for the MLV. Uh, this thing works fantastic. It's a great launch vehicle. Uh, we still... There is still some things that we should probably get right or probably change up with the uh, first stage. Uh, it, but it's mostly trajectory optimize, like it's trajectory optimizations, mostly. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, that's something we'll dial in over time. Um, I'm kind of worried. I'm kind of worried about the uh, part count. This is a lot of parts. 436 for the stack is a little bit high. I'm wondering if there's stuff that we can pull. That cough might turn into a sinus infection. Yep. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope, I hope not. <laughs> that would really suck. But you know what? I'd rather have a sinus infection than COVID. <laughs> if I have to choose. I got the auto ascent to basically fly the same trajectory every time. Yep. Better than a cosinus infection? What about a tangent infection? Yeah. Trigometric infections. You got lucky with COVID and kicked it in two days. Dude, The that's what happened with me. I kicked it in two days, but like the major symptoms, but it's just been lingering. Just long COVID, I guess, is what it is. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, not, not, not medical expert. Uh, but yeah, I just cough every once in a while, but I feel fine. I'm 100% good to go. Uh, just, yeah, just <coughs> every once in a while. 
You know what? Discovery, go and throttle up. You know what? Ricolas. Ricolas! I have some Rick Rick Ricolas. That'll prevent the cough. I forgot I had those. So, yeah, just some leftover gunk. I tell people I'm just clearing out all the crap left over from that battle that was fought. How many missions to buy this rocket? Ah? Eh? Calculate the intersection of the sinus cough with the cosinus infection. Ah, I don't know. We'd probably go on a huge tangent doing that. Eh? <laughs> Got him! <laughs> That's a knee slapper! Uh, uh, I feel sick. I feel sick making that joke. Alright, well... We're gonna resume mission mode, hypersonic. Yeah, this rocket was built for mission mode. Oh, this is the AP prototype, hold on. Uh, so yeah, I could take the autopilot and stuff out of it. Mayor, that's something I really didn't want to know, but I, I mean, I know it now. That's something I didn't really want to know. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I know now. Didn't really want to, but. Discovery, go and throttle up. All right, stack prototype here is the one that we can use, and I'm gonna get a hint on the, uh, we can get rid of the autopilot controller. There. I just kinda wanna see how many parts this thing actually is. 430. A lot of parts for a, for a launch vehicle, but hey, Flykin, how are you? Kyron, get the sub to mayor. Nice. I think we're good. There might be places where we can cut down on parts, like the guides right here. But yeah, we'll see. Everything here, though, works really, really nice. Uh, I'm pretty dang happy with with how this rocket flies. Um, but, I mean, you know what I was thinking? A lot of the parts are physics-less parts, so it's not going to screw with the performance too, ba too bad. But yeah. I love that we put the raceway on this rocket. That makes me so happy. Look at it. We used flags to make the raceway going up the side, so it looks like there's a wire harness going from the engine section to the avionics package up, at, up front, which I thought was really cool. I'm wondering if we're going to need a payload alignment mechanism, a PLF alignment mechanism right here, similar to what I have right here. That would jack the part count up to about 450 for the rocket. And I also noticed something wrong here. Um, there is an absolute snap here that isn't exactly right, which sucks. I don't know how I missed it, but if we look, if we take the fairing and see I snap it, I never snapped it to absolute. Not snapping it to absolute now makes that 
fairing kind of Clyde, which means we'd need to redo some of the second stage, but... Get rid of the nose cone. What nose cone? I'm doing fine, Flanken, yeah. I'm gonna turn the music down just a, just a little bit. You're a nose cone. What, that nose cone right there? No, y you know what, you know what we should do? I'm just gonna build out the vehicle the way I want, right? And then we'll take parts away that we don't see fit. Like, we may or may not need all these struts right here. If I reduce these struts down to three strut, uh, three X symmetry uh, struts instead of uh, four X, that, that will alleviate, let's see, one, two, three, there's another set right there, four, five. Yeah, we, we, that, that'll knock five parts off right there. That's five parts we can use somewhere else. Um, so, yeah. The other thing, the next thing that we need to work on is the transport vehicles for this stuff. Because this rocket, if you notice the way it's connected, guys, the MLV is designed to be reused. This first stage is designed to come back down. Obviously, it has Falcon 9 inspired landing legs. It's designed to come back down and land. And it's designed to come back down and land and be put back onto the pad, be reintegrated back onto the pad. So, yeah, we got to... We got to figure out uh, transport vehicles because I'm going to need to bust out a new first stage. Or if we lose a first stage, we're going to need to get another one. And then I'm going to need to figure out ways to bust out second stages and payloads all the time. Now, the vehicle will be vertically integrated like uh, like previous previous vehicles. Uh, I can show you pictures. It'll be put together basically the same way as the Freedom Rocket because that we know that way works. <laughs> <coughs> what part is the chine? What, the raceway up the side? Uh... <coughs> Come on. Come on, boys. Let's go. Uh, they're flags. Big, big chungus. Big chungus. Oh, we gotta get back to doing all this. Yeah, see? The Freedom Rocket. It'll be basically put together just like that. I vote a completely new build from scratch. This is a completely new build from scratch, you doofus. I mean, hi. How was your fourth, Tara? Hey, Pasquale. What's up, dude? You're using another rocket build is similar. Well, yeah, but you want, you, you gotta understand what you're saying. What you're saying is like, oh, you know, well, that car has four tires, so you should do something different. Tara, this this is a scratch-built design. I, this is not a copy of any particular rocket in real life or in Kerbal. Discovery it's just going to be put up. together in the same way as a Freedom Rocket because that's the way that I found that Kerbal works the best. I.e. not, you know, putting it on the pad and having it blow up when you try to put something together. The free, the way the Freedom Rocket, it's more of copying the way it goes together, not not the design. Yes, fifth tire car. It was okay. I had to keep the puppers from shaking into a pile of mush. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, chat, someone catch me up. You haven't seen this craft yet? This is the... It doesn't have a name just yet, Homing Pigeon, but this is part of my new project for Mission Mode 2. It's called Project Ares. Project Ares is basically an end-to-end -end architecture. We design the whole damn thing before we launch any missions. Like Saturn 1B and Saturn 5 or Ares 1 and Ares 5, similar to that. This is the medium duty launch vehicle. Basically, what I'm coming to learn about engineering, and this is somebody that's coming from the outside in, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not a classically trained engineer by any means. I'm not even an engineer. Like, I, I just, it's a hobby of mine. How much of a dork do I sound like saying that um uh yeah dork 
Yeah, geek, probably. Anyway, um, something that I'm really learning about engineering is that it, it you like it really comes down to what are you trying to do? What are you doing? That is the biggest question. What are you doing? <laughs> like, okay, you're designing a rocket. What do you want this rocket to do? So what I'm going to try to do, what I've been doing in the past is I've been designing a rocket and then like the SSTOs, we designed the SSTOs and then we tried to figure out the missions for it later, right? Something that coincidentally happened in real life and proved not to be a good idea. Um, if you design a rocket with an explicit intention, right, it, it usually goes way smoother, right? Saturn, Saturn V is a good example of that. They, they knew exactly what they wanted this rocket to do. They engineered it for purpose. It's designed to put somebody on the moon and bring them back. Simple as that. Anything else is just supplementary. You know what I mean? Like Skylab or, uh, you know, Apollo Soyuz test project. That's all supplementary stuff. That's all you do that after you, after you do the initial objective. So homing this rocket is one rocket in a much bigger family of rockets that I will design that with the explicit intention of getting Kerbals in my mission mode save back to the moon. Uh, it is a much more solidified architecture because I'm designing exactly what I want the vehicles to do out of the box. So with, with the MLV, the medium launch vehicle, which will be supplemented by the HLV, heavy launch vehicle, which we haven't designed yet, they saved Capstone, I heard. Um... Flags for a raceway, huh? Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time somebody's done that. But it is a good idea. And we did have the part count for it, and it does look really cool. They saved Capstone. It is confirmed. Yeah, yeah, fellas. It was like right when I hit the live button. That was breaking breaking news. I, I hate using that term, breaking news. Breaking news. It's not breaking news if it breaks all the damn time. I don't know why that's up there. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Yep. They reestablished connection. Excellent. I'll be honest with you guys. I got a little bit distracted by this this shot. This shot's pretty neat from Tori Brunel right here. I'm on fire right now. Of course, subs. Dude. That just goes to show you the residual pressure coming off of these things. Even when the rocket is well past, in that cloud, it's so damn turbulent, it knocks the camera over. The rocket is like a half mile that way, and it still knocks that camera over. Also, the Dominator. Last 541 configuration, which is just annoying. Now, I know people are asking questions. What's this? Positive pressure, positive pressure HVAC for the fairing to make sure that the payload stays cool inside of the fairing uh, when the vehicle is on the pad. A fairing out there baking in the sun all day in Florida, or, well, lack thereof, yeah, you could fry some stuff. Remember, satellites aren't designed to really work down here. They're designed to work in the vacuum. So when you introduce them to something like this, they can get really, really freaking hot and they can bake inside of that fairing. Uh, so there's a there's an HVAC system put in and that's where that's the hot air vent. See the umbilical closed. Now I know what the next question is. What's that? Hydrogen. It's a hydrogen vent line. Same exact thing. In case any air does get stuck up inside of the fairing on the way up, the fairing isn't pressurized. But you don't want you want the fairing to be able to drain all the air out of there, right? It's not a pressure vessel, but the fairing can act like a pressure vessel in certain circumstances. So fairings have vent lines on them. Falcon 9 does have vent lines. They're down at the bottom of the fairing. This is an older design, but this thing serves dual purpose. If you notice, it's covered in ice. 
It's because the centaur is riding inside of the forward load reactor right here. So there's hydrogen and fairing pressure coming out of this thing. Because once again, centaur is riding right here. Hey dragon, I'm feeling just fine. Yep. It's an older design, sir, but it checks out. Well, Atlas's fairings, if I'm looking at them correctly, are based off of Titan. Titan, this, this comes from the Titan design. Titans had this for the longest time. Yeah, if we go find some Titan footage launching from the same pad, it looks exactly like that. There's your cylindric interstage right there. And then there's the top of the isogrid structure for the Atlas core stage. And then four SRBs right there. The 541 configuration. Last time you're going to see this version of Atlas launch. Yeah, USSF-12 was the last 541 config for Atlas. We're, re we're, we're at the beginning of the end for Atlas. That sounded really strange to say. I did not like, I didn't like saying that at all. Hey, Anesthesia, it's 41 months. Thank you. Modern engineering, bare minimums for X amount of use on the cheap, nothing more. Yeah, pretty much. What are you trying to do, right? Make it as simple as you can. But, unbiased, here's the thing about rocket science, and this is another thing that I've learned. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it was simple to make. The simplest engineering designs, the ones that are the most refined, are usually the ones that are the most expensive. I'll give you a I'll give you a good example. That's pretty straightforward right there. What that thing is doing. Hey Rocket Guy. How you doing, buddy? 70 months. Another one. That's pretty straightforward. This is just a reusable upper stage, right? It's just a reusable upper stage. Comes back down and lands. Simple as that, right? Not too not too hard. Oh, well. Simple in theory. Very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. You're going to find out when we see S24 go. You're going to find out how difficult that is to do. In fact, S24 is probably going to Viking funeral, if I had to guess. If it even makes it that far. Stick out, but visible. Let me see. Yep, there it is. On a Titan rocket. That's a Titan Centaur, right? <coughs> <coughs> Come on, buddy. Let's go. <clears throat> Titan three centaur right there. See last. See last. Also see last. I think I found some footage from the capstone help desk call. Have you tried turning it on and off again? Well, it turned itself off. Duh. They cleared this pad this morning over at Boca Chica. No idea why. It's ship 24 static fire from what I understand. There's only one more 401, 421, and 531. 12 more 551s, and 7 more not 22s. It'll be a shame seeing Atlas go, Phil. It'll be a shame. It will be a damn shame. But, hey, on to bigger and better things. I don't know about you guys, I want a 5 meter centaur. I've always wanted a 5 meter centaur. <laughs> <laughs> no propellant will be loaded today. <laughs> no notice to the people in the village. Okay. Vickers, 20 month resub. Merry birthday for yesterday, bud. Hope you had a good weekend. Yeah. It was an okay weekend because nobody wanted us going anywhere because COVID. So I really didn't get to celebrate the 4th of July except in my house. I didn't even get to launch a firework off. But it was okay. I... It's COVID, man. What do you want? What do you want? Like, it is what it is. Hey, Jim, 52 months. Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> Did you see the new BE4 pictures? <laughs> Did I see the new BE4 pictures? Don't insult me like that again. Bro, is that a Greg raid? Is that a Greg raid? Is that an Econ Greg raid? Oh, my guy. What's up? <laughs> what's going on? Ah, uh, Euknis, not in my state. <laughs> Bill, the police will come after you. EJ invented the B4 pictures. I am the Senate. I was in this raid. You guys know my buddy Econ Greg. He, hey, I, I, I bet you can't guess what, what subject he likes to teach on stream. 
Econ Greg. No, you're wrong. It's not economics. It's astronomy. Ah. Aha. 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 Yeah, three for a curveball there. He, economy and Gregory. Yes, yes. Greg, what's going on, man? Seriously, though, you want to you see some awesome astronomy streams? Go and check him out. Greg, I was out in New Mexico. No, not doing peyote. I was out in New Mexico in the middle of the desert for Spaceport America Cup a couple weeks ago, dude. And uh, we had a clear night driving home. And the sky. Oh, my God. Uh, I, dude, I, ha I had no words. I was just sitting there going, that's not real. That's real. Like, you could see, it's out, in the, it's out in the desert in New Mexico, so there's no lights. There's no light pollution. There's nothing. You could see the whole sky. You could see, and dude, all the satellites buzzing around, unbelievable. One of the wildest things I've ever seen. It's, dude, it looked like a freaking skybox, Altio. I'm not even kidding. It looked like a skybox. I just got back from Sedona, Arizona. Sam, oh, right on, man. So now you have an appreciation as to why we hate Starlink. I actually, I didn't want, I didn't want to mention that part that I thought it was cool seeing all the Starlink satellites. But yeah, I get the gist of it. Pretty hilarious videos of people launching fireworks like in their own apartment. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to launch any, man. I'm bumming. But I got to watch. So, from the comfort of my own home. But, yeah. In Boston, I don't know how... I don't know how they do it anywhere else in the U.S., but in Boston, during the 4th of July ceremonies in the city, they play the 1812 Overture, and they have the Army National Guard there, and they're, they're letting howitzers go off with, with blank cartridges, right, to the 1812 Overture with fireworks going off in the background. It's pretty sweet, man. da 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 So, got to watch that. That was fun. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. It's my favorite part. <laughs> Let the cannons fire. Like the, they're sitting on the fire line, and the, the guy's like, "No!" and it's just. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. They let they let like howitzers fly. It's pretty well, not fly, but you get the idea. It's pretty sweet. Yep. Oh, this is where it started. We got to do it right, Thomas. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, they let cannons go, and then they're playing the 1812 Overture, and then they stop, and then fireworks start going off. It's it's awesome, dude. Fourth of July in Massachusetts is great. Now, like, it's a, fireworks are illegal in Massachusetts, except on the 4th. The police are just like, mm. I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see nothing. So people are lighting off fireworks everywhere. It's fun, man. It's a good time. <clears throat> You'd like Edinburgh. 1 p.m. every day they fire a cannon at Edinburgh Castle. Oh, that's pretty cool. Please tell me you're going to play the 3, 2, 1, go! Audio when you launch. Yeah. Yeah, you miss the shops around the New Hampshire border. Yeah, the duty, the duty-free shops. Yep, yep. What about New Year's Eve? They don't let cannons go on New Year's Eve, Green Lad, but they do launch fireworks. Yeah, it's a good time, dudes. Anyway, Homing Pigeon, if you're still here, I was in the middle of explaining this. Um, so, you want to see this vehicle fly? I'll show you. A little late, but there's a Dutch firework PS. <laughs> oh no. Oh, yep, okay. Who are they firing at? Firing at the British. Maybe. No, you. you wait, BY. You don't want to see it fly? Mihoro Sho? Okay. Alright, I'll just. We could just sit here and look at it. That's fine. Ugh. Stupid freaking COVID. Here, AP prototype. Check this out. 
It's beautiful just sitting there. Yeah, it's cool just sitting there, but it's more cool when it flies. So, let's put this thing out here. Just sit and look at it for 30 minutes? I mean, that's my specialty, Linus, but I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see that. Good morning, McCade. How are you? Oh, coffee. Looking pretty slick. Yeah, Rocket Guy, it's getting there. I gotta work on all the GSE for it, dude. We get now we gotta just put the thing together. These are these are early trajectory simulations, if anything. Right? I noticed some spacing alignment issues with the top fairing, which gives us lateral pogo on the way up. Uh, because that's not absolute snap, so we get lateral pogo be on the way up, which is a little bit annoying, but um, that's easily fixed. Uh, and then we have to split them up and we have to develop the equipment to be able to bring them to the pad and then put it together. Uh, and the, one of the last things I need to do is a payload alignment mechanism. But look, 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 look. See it? Yeah, Kerbal doesn't like that because it's not, it's not precisely lined up. Want? Okay. All right, so this has the autopilot on. This is the AP stack. SAS engage, radial out lock. Okay, take the engines, put the engines to full. All right. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen what MLV can do, here, I'll show you. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Thanks, FX. How are you? Bio. Wow. I'm just using the mouse to turn. World program complete. Vehicle is now pitching down range. Neither, Ultio. This is, uh, this is stock autopilot. I've automated it just to test Lunchbox. It's just to test it out. I don't think we'll go for full automation just because it's going to be a little bit difficult to do with differential payload mass. This is like playing Hardy in World of Tanks, only need one finger. <laughs> Yeah, especially if you have what's the what's the big the big chunker uh, RD piece or is it a TDPY? It's like an ISU 152 or something. When you absolutely have to eliminate every melon farmer on the battlefield, that one with the big it's just a cannon with some tank treads attached to the side. What's that one called? It's an ISU if I'm remembering right. Yep. She does the initial initial ascent for you, but keep in mind, the, the the ascent would change drastically if we like have half of the payload mass that we're carrying. I think it's an ISU 152, yeah. But yeah, totally automated, guys. I'm just using the mouse to move around. Even the even the separation is automated. It's the, it's it always has main engine cut off at about 900. And 10, 912, somewhere in there. So we should see Miko here in a second. Second stage engine chill. Watch. Stage separation confirmed. And now you take control. Pop the fairing off at 45. And then ghost ride the stage. Go back over here. Flip that down. RCS engage. Re-engage thrust on the three engines in the center. Yeah, the big chungus. Mm -hmm. Relight.
Okay. That should give us enough to land. So now we move the stage up here. Turn on YPR. Yaw pitch and roll. Set that as target. And then once we get above 70, which we're at, we're above 70 right now, we switch back to that first stage. And I'm not going to circularize it because I don't want to clog up my engineering mode save with just stages up here, right? How do you manage both at the same time? As long as you get the first stage above 70, it's fine. Looks like our inclination is slightly off. See, the second stage will just circularize here. Well, hopefully it circularizes before the first stage gets gobbled up by the Kraken. It's just a balancing act, dude. But now to drop a spare fuel in this thing, well, keep in mind this is maximum payload. Fellas, this is taking the maximum amount of payload into space. All right, there we go. That would have made it. We have a thousand delta V left, 52 second burn time. Uh, with a periapsis at 11. So that thing is going to burn up. Uh, so now, keep yeah, keep in mind, I've been doing all of my trajectory optimizations for boost back, landing, etc., etc. I've been doing it... Uh, I've been doing it with, like, maximum payload. The maximum heaviest payload here. Flip that around here. We're coming in a little off target. Here, let me uh, just reorient. We need to come in over here like this to get back to that landing site. The automated, the automated trajectory actually puts me on this slightly offset every time. We should be able to compensate and steer it in. But yeah, what Rocket Guy said, Moto, is basically what the the trick there. You got to get the first stage above 70 so you can switch to the second stage to circularize. Putting it on a suborbital trajectory uh, at 70 kilometers it should be enough to circularize that second stage. It should be enough to circularize the second stage here uh, and make it so the first stage doesn't get gobbled up by the Kraken. Rocket Guy, I'm also noticing if you try to steer this thing when the pressure, when the dynamic pressure is really high, it has a tendency for the wings to over... The wings can overcome the, uh, the control surfaces at higher pressures. Yeah, that's no good. Legs didn't lock. She's down, but it's broken. I broke it. We landed too hard. Yeah, that's not going to end well. Yeah, sneaky, but when it when it doesn't lock, your the robotics are holding it up and it gets to be a little broken. But yeah, that's the idea for the MLV thus far. It's pretty good. My leg hurts watching this, yeah. Boss, I thought instead of adjusting the cal for different payloads, have diff have extra fuel in the upper stage, so that with lighter payloads you could fill it up with extra mass to keep the same or whatever. Tessa, that's a, that's, that's a, oh, we, I mean, we thought about ballasting out because if you look at the second stage, we have a thousand delta V extra on that second stage, right? Uh, 
so I could, we could do that. I just don't really want to teach bad habits like that. That's something that makes the autopilot work for Kerbal. And it kind of, it kind of gets a little eh with my plausible realism rules that I go with. Where should I go to learn all the terminology that you're saying? Ice Climber, you could just ask me. You could just ask me, dude. You can learn it here. I can teach you it, no problem. That's what I do. That's that's my that's my meal ticket, man. What do you want to know? How many Kerbucks is the first stage? It's expensive. Yeah, just stick around here, dude. That's my stick for uh, for if you want to learn the basics. I, heck, I do get into some advanced stuff, but uh, yeah, just ask me. There's Ice Climber, there's plenty of real rocket scientists in the chat. I just play one on Twitch, but yeah. Just ask, tag at EJSA. I, I make sure to interact with chat. I'm not going to ignore my chat. One, because we're a small streamer, and I, we're, it's a small stream. I can afford to do that. Um, and two, uh, this is the first stage. Oh, that's the old first stage. And two, I, this is a STEM stream. I teach people how, I teach people the basics about rocket science. The idea is to get people involved, to get people into it, because it's cool, man. It's a freaking explosion box that shoots fire out the bottom. At, it shoots fire out at faster than the speed of sound. It's really cool. It's a supersonic flamethrower. Like that, and I'm not even kidding. That's the technic. Technically, that's what it is. That's what a rocket engine does. It's a supersonic flamethrower. In order for a rocket engine to work correctly, you need to be able to build up enough chamber pressure to accelerate combusted gases right at supersonic speeds. If you can't, if it doesn't get to supersonic speeds, you've made a really nice flamethrower. That's what makes a rocket engine pow, is getting the gases to accelerate to supersonic. So if you have a question, you want to know what I'm talking about, what I mean, etc., etc., just ask. Just tag at EJSA. I'll answer. And if I don't, just, just say, hey, EJ, I had a question a second ago. Can you check it out? I'll go and look. No problem. You see, we brought the Maverick stash back. That's right. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. I'm st it's staying like this for a while, dude. That Saturn V looks, looks nice, RJ. The dreaded C last. Yeah, we did the raceways down the side, Dragon. It, it ended up looking really, really nice. But yep, here we go. How much does that first stage cost? Uh, 240, so let's just save before I go and mess with this. The first stage is expensive. Oh, hey, what up? 217 G's. The first stage is expensive, but it's also reusable. You don't, I don't mind give, putting in the extra cash for that thing because it's supposed to come back and land, right? Did you ever attempt that RFA-1 space debris removal scenario in Kerbal? No, but I could, I could do it. Appreciate it? Yeah, no problem, Ice. Yeah, Ice Climber, listen to Rocket Guy. If you if you really want to know like technical definitions and stuff, Rocket Guy actually works on rockets in real life. So he, he dude, between him and me, we could teach you anything you want to know. <clears throat> Do you teach about nonlinear phase detractors? No, 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 no. No for trunnions is what we teach in here. For a number of years now, work has been proceeding on a crudely conceived idea to not only supply inverse reactive current for use in unilateral phase detractors, but also capable, also working on the capability of synchronizing cardinal gram meters. Yep. It's all about the spice pudding. That's right. I was assembling tugs on orbit, which is similar to how you did it, but then I realized it's easier to do it in one launch. 
Yeah, you realized what Apollo realized, RJ. Hey, Milo. Yeah, I think I got the turbo and cabulators covered. Yep, yep. Now, basically, the only new principle involved, instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and fluxes, it's produced by the modial interaction of, mag of magneto-reluctance and capacitive directance. The original machine had a base plate of prefamulated amulite, surrounded, s surrounded by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurbing bearings were in direct align with a panometric fan. Every seventh conductor connected to a non-reversible tremie pipe to a differential girdle spring on the up end of the Grammys. The turbo encabulator has now reached a high level of development and is being successfully used in the operation of no for Trunnions. I did because I got lazy. Discovery, no <laughs> hey, Sylvan. 68 month resub. Oh, hi. What's up, dude? This is how Ferrari build their engine. Well, they use a little bit of uh, Pisano and a little bit of pasta. Pasta. You know? A little bit of Staminki. Uh, it, it's not no for Trunnions, it's, it's a pastrami. No for pastramis. Yep. yep. That's what does it. Thermal pasta. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the fuel you ask? Oh, uh, Moscato. It is a nice fine wine. We make our fuel with a fine wine. We stomp on the grapes. But EJ, Merck cried that Ferrari did lay cheats again. Hmm. That seems like a really bumpy way of doing things, <clears throat> Bio. It seems like a real bumpy way of doing things, you know, just crying whenever another team has a car that doesn't bounce, you know. <laughs> it's a very porpoisey thing to do, don't you think? Yeah. We combine the pasta and the anti-pasta. Merck cried on purpose. Yep. Hailness, 70 months. How about that F1 race? Seriously, one of the best F1 races I've ever watched. Despite Ferrari, despite Ferrari's best efforts, they actually won the race. So, yep. Despite their best efforts, they actually did win. <laughs> despite, I, I know they try hard not to, but despite their best efforts, they actually won. That's because they won literally because one of their drivers, they were like, you, you need to do plan this. No, I'm not doing that. I'm going to drive. Please do not make me do that. I'm not doing this. Bye. I'm going to win the race now. <laughs> Do we start GSE dev now, or is there some other intermediate goal? Thank you, Rocket Guy. Um, I gotta fix the PLF problems, dude. See? Uh, we gotta fix the spacer problems there. Um, and then we gotta work on... Discovery, go and throttle up. Yeah, we should start working on GSE after that, dude. Berardi. Perez is battling everyone everywhere all of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that says that Checo is over the hill and doesn't have any fight left in him needs their head examined, dude. <laughs> it was excellent. Hey, Admiral. 34 months. Thanks. All right. So, um, Rocky Guy, let's get rid of this. Save this out like this. This first stage design is good to go. Um, so... Rocket Guy, I've been testing with the autopilot a lot lately just to see what would happen. It's, it's call it a feasibility study. Um, let's just empty this out. And now what I need to do is go back and we need to re-engineer the second stage forward skirt just a little bit. Um, 
because yeah, there was some problems. I mean, it's that's annoying that there's that I found a problem there right now because that basically annuls all my testing data, all my flight data, uh, especially when it comes to loads on the payload attachment fitting, which does suck. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna load everything into its separate craft files here. So this is this is the first stage, the finalized first stage design. This is the one with the separator mechanism on it that works, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, the 10 second sequencer for separation. Uh, let me just save that craft file out and we will go make sure that it's the same sequencer as the one on the AP because I know that separator mechanism works. Just fill the extra space with ice cream. Problem solved. <laughs> it has to be freeze dried though. Or it has to be Dippin' Dots because Dippin' Dots is the ice cream of the future. Which future? Ain't my future. Ain't my dang old future. Those are so gross. You don't like Dippin' Dots? What's wrong with Dippin' Dots? It's just ice cream in ball form. Make sure that sequencer is the same. It's not. It's not the same. Yep. The sequencer is, in fact, not the same. So, yeah, that's probably something we should... Uh, probably something we should fix. See, now what I have to do is I have to standardize the craft files. I What I like doing, guys, especially if I have something that goes together outside of the VAB, space station, rocket, pad, whatever, uh, if we have something that goes together, like we dock stuff together outside, um, I like to separate it out into craft files and have like a master craft file. That's something that we have to we have to start thinking about here. Um, so this is the AP prototype file. Um, this has the updated first stage. So all of this stuff does work. Now there are some, from our flight testing, here's the thing fellas, before I finalize the first stage and give us a good baseline, there, there's still, Rocket Guy, there's still some open tickets here. I haven't figured out the umbilical mechanism, so how the first stage is going to fuel, that was placeholder. The second thing I noticed is that you saw it during descent. There are scenarios where the wings overpower the control surface um, so what I'm thinking, honestly, is adding another set of these guys here. Adding another set of thrusters up here and have these thrusters specifically for roll axis control. So this guy right here, if we show if we turn on the axis overlay, have everything else shut off and have those specifically for roll control. Because I noticed that, so what I was doing is using the control surfaces for roll control, but whenever I set these for roll control, the wings overpower the, the grid fins, grid fins. So I think adding a second set of these is probably a good idea. What engines did I use? No problems, Zimti. Don't don't apologize. Don't apologize. Not when we're in Kerbal mode. There's no need to do that. Um, these uh, are skipper engines. I'm using skipper engines. Yeah. First and second stage. I thought it would be cooler to unify the propulsion system, so the first stage engines and the second stage engines are quite literally the same thing. Um... Now, in reality, this skipper engine would have a more vacuum-optimized nozzle, but the skipper engine is a good overall motor. Heck, I remember when it was added to the game, it was originally a mod. 650, 280, 320. 650 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum. 280 second specific impulse at sea level. 320 in vacuum. It's a good overall engine. Uh, not particularly optimized in any one way or another. It's just a good motor. It's low cost comparatively to some of the other engines that produce this much thrust. And, um, yeah. 
I it's really light for what it is for the amount of thrust that it puts out it's pretty good pretty good little motor um, yeah I I thought it was a good idea for a 375 core and uh, it, it's a pretty decent upper stage engine for this application and that brings me back to one thing that I was saying a little bit earlier Zin. you have to build for purpose that's what engineering especially with aerospace engineering that's what it's all about I'm building for purpose is that the best second stage engine that I could have? No, not even close. No, 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 no. There's way better upper stage engines in this game. However, in order to get this thing to do its my dancing act where we boost back the first stage, switch to the second stage, switch back, you know, circularize the second stage, switch back to the first stage and land it, I need an extremely high TWR second stage. So we need a high thrust to weight on that stage. So I opted to keep the skipper for the second stage motor because we need that 650 kilonewtons of thrust, you need the 650. If I don't have the 650, and I opted for a more efficient engine with less thrust, uh, yeah, the second stage wouldn't make it. It wouldn't circularize before the first stage gets gobbled up, before it goes below 25 kilometers and gets gobbled up by the Kraken. So, yeah, I made a compromise on second stage efficiency to go with a higher TWR second stage so I could get my first stage engine or my first stage back not my first stage engine so I could get my first stage entirely back what is that white stripe on the side supposed to be? the raceway it's the raceway the electronics pretty cool huh? are you thinking of doing an automated boost bag like you did with Condor? I could Dragon we could I left I have the capability for autopilot, but autopilot is not part of my stakeholder goals here. Autopilot was something that we thought would be cool to do, um, but there is some... The, the way Kerbal autopilot is kind of... The way, the way you have to do a Kerbal autopilot basically means you can't take into account differential payload mass, because if the payload is 18 tons, it's going to fly like how we just saw. If it's 9 tons, it's not even going to be the same. It's not even going to be close to the same... It's not even going to be the same ascent profile. It's going to be completely different. TWR is going to be different right off the pad. We're going to shoot... It's going to be on a lofted trajectory. So we'd have to take into account, like, with 9 tons, that we'd have to throttle the engines to get it to fly on the exact same trajectory. And then the first stage is going to have way more fuel because we're going to get to staging velocity at a lower altitude unless we throttle the engines correctly. And that uh, there's a lot of differential stuff going on there when you change the payload mass. Like, basically, the rocket flies completely different if you have half the payload mass. Go figure. A car that's hauling 1,000 kilograms is going to drive and have a completely different range, and it's going to handle completely differently than a car with no kilograms. You know what I mean? Exactly, Raga guy. Mm -hmm. Not that you would particularly want or need to, but is there any room to scale this? For instance, does the first stage TWR have enough to stretch the first stage? Um, Raga guy, the only way we do that, the only way we would do that is with an overclock. If we overclock the these engines for higher TWR, um, an overclock is the only way to do it. But once again, I don't think overclocking is particularly cheating. I mean, you're going to change the thrust output on these. You're going to change a lot. There's a lot more things that are going to, you have to take into account. It's not just, oh, I can increase the, if I increase the thrust output on the engines, right? Which you can do by breaking them with a, breaking the thrust limiter attribute with a cal controller. Um, you're going to, you have to, t well, you have to take into account the extra, one, the extra load that you're going to put on there. Two, you also have to take into account that your burn times are going to be completely different. But yeah, overclocking it would be the way to stretch if we were going to do it. But I honestly didn't... I didn't really have that pathway in... It, that's not part of my pathways, dude. This first stage, I, I'm putting so much time and effort into the first stage, especially with the landing legs, the Kraken, the, the Kraken hybrid tech and everything. I'm putting all the time into it because I want this thing to work. I want the first stage to just work. I want it, not, not Todd Howard working. I want to actually put in the time and effort and make something that's useful. Um, uh, yeah, Bethesda, I know. Um, oops, I screwed that up. 
Um, I hit remove symmetry by accident. Um, yeah, just go MLV heavy and land two boosters, RTLS, and core on a drone ship. Easy. I mean, Not gonna sit here and say that wouldn't look righteous. Now that, that's, that's a nice. Oh, it screwed up the skipper variants. I mean, it looks cool, but... <laughs> and it, dude, it could work. If I worked on the hold downs and got the hold downs to work like Falcon Heavy, I mean... It would have to be basically like that. Ugh. Unless we came up with some kind of specialized center core mechanism, Falcon Heavy style, to hold that whole thing together. But yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say that that's a bad looking rocket. Here, let me... All my struts got messed up from the isogrid structure. And Rocket Guy, I think a center core design would be good. A center core. Basically, if I modified this a little bit and moved this hold down point down here, so the hold down, the part that connects to the pad goes down here, on, and it'd be on a compression bridge just like the real one. And then I put thermometers forward on this thing and then have that sit in the hold down point on the top. Basically, on, on, on our, basically our interfacing points right here on the sides, we put the thermal bearings forward and then we shift that down that that's basically how falcon heavy works falcon heavy has pad hold downs on the sides of the center core um once again that's i don't want to screw with that too much fellas uh but yeah here rocket it I'll, I'll show you i have a picture of them up close believe it or not it's in my falcon research picture folder so look, check it out. The side boosters have the regular hold down points on it, which is this T bracket, right? And then the center core on the, at three o'clock and nine o'clock have a pad hold down. That's a pad hold down and the hold down point is offset. It's actually, yeah, they offset it up in this particular case. And it, it, it does this. It actually, well, it actually does this. It's just a pad hold down. No, well, not just a pad hold down. It's obviously optimized for this, right? Uh, it's not just a pad hold down point, right? But it's the inverse of that, which is what holds Falcon 9 to the pad. They just put it on the sides of Falcon Heavy. Pretty crazy, right? And other than, well, actually, it looks like there is more modifications in there because I don't see the T-peg right there. I'm pretty new to KSP. What do the thermometers do? Hinges. They're hinges that hold the legs together, dude. Um, there's ways to make really, really strong hinges, Euknus. Um, because there are robotic parts in the download packs for, for Kerbal. But these robotic parts are about as strong as Jello uh, when it comes to holding up any particular load. So what I do is I use something called hybrid tech. Hybrid tech is uh, 
It's basically screwing with Kerbal's physics a little bit by using physicsless parts to make hinges. All right. And then there's a there's a flag that you can kind of trigger on parts to um, get them to collide with each other. Basically, activate their hitboxes. And if you look, the part that I've highlighted right there, so the RCS with the thermometer around it, that's basically a mount and a cup, and it makes a hinge. And then this part right here is attached to the landing leg. If I select the landing leg up there, um, if we select the landing leg, it'll highlight it'll highlight this piece. It's that's the no that's drive. the axle. It basically creates a hinge for you. The reason why, like I said, the reason why is I need these hinges to be strong because they're holding up the first stage when it lands. I need them to be strong. Genex, 46 month resub. So I use a combination of the robotic hinges in the game, struts, and my my custom built hinges to um, to make really, really strong parts. Uh, yeah, I call it I call it hybrid tech because Back in the day, before the robotic parts were made, if you wanted to make a hinge, that's how you did it. But when they added robotics to the game, we kind of stopped using these. We stopped using them because we didn't need to because we had the robotic parts. And then we figured out the robotic parts are about as strong as jello. So we figured out a way to get them to work with the robotic parts. That's why I call it hybrid tech, because this way was Kraken tech, because you're making hinges out of thermometers and RCS thrusters, right? It, you're tempting the Kraken every time you use this. <laughs> so we called it Kraken Tech, right? And then we call it, and then we had this, that's robotics, right? So robotics and Kraken Tech together is hybrid tech because you're using a combination of the, all the different animation mechanism or animation avenues that are in Kerbal. So hybrid tech is really, 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 really useful. You could do a lot of crazy stuff with it. Um, not just making landing legs. I've built cranes and stuff like with a boom that goes down and picks stuff up and it doesn't break. It's a really, really smart decision. Uh, a really, really smart, not decision. It was a, it's a good idea. And the reason like you, you know, you're going to look at this and you say, well, dude, that's a lot of parts. If every single one of these hinges has an extra eight parts in it with the hinge and everything. Well, yeah, but I want this thing to be reusable. I want it to be strong. You got to build it stronger. If you want it to, you want it to be reused. Jindex 46 months. Thanks buddy. That's so cool. I tried to make Falcon Heavy using the robotic parts and they would just fall over. Exactly, Mikey. That's the problem. So hybrid tech, here, let me teach you how to do it. It's really easy. So physicsless parts, right? These are physicsless. They only collide with the ground, basically. They're, they're not going to have an arrow calculation on them because they're a physicsless part. Because they're a physicsless part, they don't drift. They don't bend around. It's physicsless, right? So what I do... If you go in here and you click on it in the action group menu, right? I always just bind it to AG1. You'll have an oper you'll, you'll have a flag here in their in their selection attributes to s enable same vessel collision. And if you enable same vessel collision on physicsless parts, well, they'll collide with each other. They'll collide with anything that's close to the edge of their hitbox, right? Cuz every part in KSP, just like a first person shooter or something, has a hitbox. It has a collider box. It's called a collider mesh. Um, uh, yeah, a collider mesh. Every part that gets put into KSP has one of these. It's, a, it's an invisible 3D representation of the object, uh, usually a lot lower resolution uh, than the actual object to, for, for performance purposes. Um, and those. Uh, those allow for, for, for better performance so you don't have a, a super high res mesh for a, for a collision box. Um, and that hitbox basically allow you, this flag allows the hitbox to collide with other parts on the same vehicle. It's called same vessel interaction. Now, you can trigger this just in the action menus here. You can trigger it in the action menu, same vessel interaction, but you can't do it with physicsless parts. The only time the physicsless parts will have that attribute on them is if you attach them to a robotic piece. In which case, that's really great. That's all fine and dandy. But the robotic part is just going to drift even if you used it to make a hinge, right? The robotic part will still just move around. So it didn't really work too well. We found a way with the action groups to just set it. You could just set physics. You could set same vessel collision with the action groups despite it not being attached to a robotic part. That's the huge benefit here. 
Once again, I've been able to make all kinds of crazy stuff with hybrid tech. Um, really, 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 really nutty stuff. Well, I mean, obviously, if you don't use this equipment how I designed it, right? If you try to slam the booster into the ground before the thing locks into place, yeah, of course it's not going to work, right, Tessa? I mean, it's not totally unbreakable, but here, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, up here, I was working on just as a kind of a test to see if it would work. Uh, That's awesome. Thanks for the help. You definitely try it. It's a good call. But Mikey, with the thermometers around the RCS, my one thing, you have to be very precise with it or else it'll just bounce out or it'll be too tight and it'll pop out. Take your time when you make your bearings. Really, really sit there and mess with them. That's what I did uh, with my... Um, if we go up here, I'll show you. One of my prototypes for testing out... Uh, See, Chunguska Hybrid Tech. Look at this thing. Would that prevent the robotics from drifting? Yes. Yes, it will. Because every time you reload, the same vessel collision will pop the hinge back into its original default place. It does prevent drift. 100% confirmed. I used this craft file to figure that one out, if you guys want to see. Watch. So... We made bearings out of spectrometers right there. If you notice, there it's a bunch of spectrometers hugging those same RCS balls. I use the RCS balls a lot because they're a, it's a perfectly spherical collider, so it's a perfect sphere. The hitbox, it's really easy to make a make hinges with a perfect sphere. You just stack a bunch of them next to each other, you get a perfect axle every time. Um, but once again, you got to be careful, Mikey. You got to be careful with how you move those parts into position. So check this out. Anybody that knows a little bit about physics, right, will know what's going to happen if I pull back on this, right? It's going to lift it up. But if we're not running enough counterweight here, it's going to lean the crane forward. Now, on any other hinge design here, now check this out. On the, the main boom on this crane, all I have is a regular hinge. Get rid of the torque limiter. We don't need, we don't need power on that hinge. Now watch. Watch this. So... Let me make sure that my jib, the jib mast, also doesn't have power. So let's just pull back. Now remember, I hit action group one to toggle same vessel collision. Now, if this was robotics, guys, just regular robotics without the Kraken tech on it, it would have broken already. It would have popped completely out of socket. But if you look, hinge doesn't drift at all. The colliders hold it in position. Look at that. The other parts, the, the, the regular parts are bending. And the pin on this crane is also made with hybrid tech. Look, see, that RCS ball is holding everything in place. It's on the pin, the, the pivot point for the crane. Look at that. Hey, Mikey. Welcome to Mission Control. You're going throttle up. Thanks, man. Check that out. We're running nine tons of weight on the end of the crane. We're moving nine tons of payload and we only have nine tons of counterweight back here. This would break any crane in real life. Th this would, yeah, because it would break anything because at three times the distance, we have the same weight. So this thing would have bent forward and crashed a long time ago, but these hinges are absurdly strong, right? And I can go through the entirety of raising this thing with the payload attached. It doesn't break the damn thing. I'm going to, Hypersonic. After the move, dude, I want to make videos. I want to make YouTube videos on how to do this stuff. Advanced Kerbal building. Advanced hierarchy builds. Advanced Kraken tech builds. Yeah. Would you use the auto strut on thermometers? Ed, I don't think we have the option to do that. Because physics-less part. You can't auto strut the physics-less parts unless they're attached to a robotic, Mikey. So... Um, I don't think you can. It's only in case circumstances, but yeah, you could auto strut them if you want. Discovery, go at throttle up. My pick! Advanced verbal building. What's up, dude? You have a good fourth? 
How you doing? If you designed it correctly, Mike, you could do that, sure. Yeah, it, these would have to be attached to robotics, which kind of defeats the point. You don't want to attach your physicsless parts directly to the robotic. So what I do is I attach the hinge to a physicsless part. So I have like a cubic octag, hinge, cubic octag, and I have the bearings on the top cubic octag, the one that the part that pivots. So they'll be attached to the 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 movable flange. So this part right here. And then I have the housing attached to the other cubic octag that would be down here. That's the best way that I found to do it. Because if you attach physicsless on either end, physicsless parts don't drift. They're physicsless. They don't move around. You, everybody knows that the robotic parts drift over time, right? That doesn't happen here. Look, I can time warp this thing. Anybody knows anything about Kerbal, right? You time warp right now, this thing will break. Nope. I can fly another vehicle near this thing while it's holding that payload up there. Hinges don't drift. They just pop back into place every time. Yeah, ate some lamb. I'm good. You're going to Boston in a week? Oh, you're going to be up here? That's cool, man. What's going to bring you to my neck of the woods, dude? If you don't mind me asking. Check this out. You turn the whole thing, no problem. Yeah, I use Bolshoi Chunguska here to... Chunguska is the name of my crane, because Big Chungus. Chunguska. Uh, I use this to kind of screw with hybrid tech. This was my prototype. And it works just fine. Works great, actually. Yep, nothing drifts around. The only... Actually, that's not entirely true. The only things that do drift here are these parts. They're drifting because they're under tension load during time warp. So these are just regular robotics. So those do drift around a little bit. But if we put one of these in here, put one of these hinges in here, yes, it would increase the part count, but it would literally never drift. You wouldn't have to worry about it. I'll never forget the Chunguska event of 09. Your dad has a business trip plus Roger Waters concert, so he took you along. All in all, it's just another brick in the wall. Denny, you've been busy lately. B0 had an 18-monther in there. I assume closing on the house happened. When do you guys move? We did close. We move in August. Fortunately, the apartment that we live in is cool. Uh, so, I mean, not cool. Like, they, when we moved in, we had to pay first and last. So, if August is our last month here, it's already paid for. We already paid for it back in 2018. So, uh, and the sellers leave the house on the 29th of this month. So we move in August. August, I'm gonna we're gonna do a slow move back and forth. Um, yeah, I want to go see the Haba. Congratulations on the house. Thanks, man. My pick. The house has a freaking high bay in it, dude. I'm not kidding. Freaking, we found a house just, and the house has a freaking high bay. Now I don't want to post this picture on the internet, dude. Uh, but here, take a look. This house has an 1,100 square foot garage attached to it. There it is. 20 foot high ceilings, 30 by 40. I have a freaking shop, dude. I have a high bay attached to my house. Oh yeah, no, we're doing despicable things in there. We could build, we're gonna build stuff like this in real life there. That's at least four project cars with lifts even more need a gantry crane stat but we're gonna yeah slap through the garage we could fit so many financially questionable decisions in there yeah so i had an overlap with my old and new apartment it's great makes moving much easier yep no pressure mm -hmm. can you turn on svi in real life everything is svi in real life it's actually easier than kerbal huh. let's just say Discovery. Let's no just say, fellas, that we'll be raiding McMaster Car a lot, uh, a lot more. I have to be careful. We, ha I have to make sure that I'm not uh, spending my mortgage money because, yeah, 
having space like that, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be doing some despicable things. Joji, 52 month resub. So, yep, yep. I also, I want to do high powered rocketry. I'll build a kit in there. Sure. We'll build a kit, work on the cars. You guys got to remember, dude, I'm putting my studio in the garage. This setup is going in there. It's going in the garage. So, instead of me just pulling the green screen back and you seeing a Bruins jersey, which will still be there, don't worry, um, I'll be able to pull it back and the truck will be right behind me. <laughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> we could switch to wrenching streams like that. You want to do wrenching streams for after hours? That's fine. I don't have to worry about making noise. We don't live in an apartment. The next closest house is 100 feet away. The property is on an acre. So, yeah, I don't have to worry about any of that. Yes, we have to bring the damn Bruins jersey along. It's been there my entire streaming career. I don't know, JDG. I have no idea. We'll figure something out, dude. I want to build something. I, I, I got to go to Tripoli and I got to apply for a membership so we can get certs, so we can build it. The USS Constitution did get underway for the 4th. Yep. Oh, that's at, uh... Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Let me see. Whose video is this? Alice Bourgeois. Oh, look at that, man. Mm, Tessa, I have some I have some ideas. I'm going to use a big TV for chat so I can read chat anywhere in the garage. So I could just look and read what you guys are saying. I'll just have a screen that is just a popped out window that's huge, right? For chat. And uh, let's just say I've been consulting. I've been consulting with people uh, with a certain company. And certain people that I might uh, be very good friends with at a certain company for certain uh, pan, tilt, and zoom solutions. So, Das, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, Das and I are, Das and I are basically going to hook up, uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to at least attempt to hook up some PTZ style cameras for the automotive streams. So, uh, like a, a moderator can pan, tilt and zoom and basically be a virtual cameraman, just like Starbase, Ian. Yeah. We're going to put a Starbase live setup, not, not for live streaming, like all the time, not 24 seven. Right. Uh, but a setup that I can, we can dial into, um, while I'm working on the cars and basically I can always have a moderator or someone watching over me and just pan tilt and zoom. Yep. Yep. So you guys can control the cameras and stuff, or like I can have a moderator be a remote remote cameraman. So it will have like a PTZ on a tripod. Actually what we were talking about is having a, um, a PTZ on a piece of extruded aluminum with a runner on it, like a 3d printer. So it can go back and forth along, uh, alongside the garage. So, you know, if I'm working on the back of the car, it just, and then the PTC can move around. Pretty cool, huh? You know, you can put a clip on your shirt and have cameras auto track you. You don't need a cameraman. Well, I don't want the cameras to be on me when I'm wrenching on the cars. Capstone update. Yep. They, they reestablished connection with Capstone. Yep, we'll talk about that for Space News. Series tip. For all mankind, it's alternative space in his history. Pretty cool. I like the first season, Zappo. I hate the second season, and I didn't care about the third season. But anyway, yeah, that's really cool. Wait, did they fu Hold on. Oh, that's freaking sweet. Yeah. Full broadside. Oh, God. Freedom. 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 
the freedom. Oh, that's making me very happy. Yep. Don't you, don't you huzzah. I'm fire. That's, that's awesome. Oh, that's amazing. That, mm, yep, nope. I'm, uh, freedom. I looked away and I looked back, so I didn't look back. Freedom. Oh, that's freaking awesome, dude. Yeah, they, Electron, every once in a while, they bring the Constitution out uh, to flip it around. They, they flip the Constitution uh, around. Uh, and they, they bring it out into the harbor. And they... They, I mean, I don't think she sails, but... Oh, that is freaking sweet. Discovery, go at throttle up. That's cool, man. Yeah, they, they rotate the ship around in the dock uh, where it's berthed to... Um, I think it's to make sure that there's even wear on the hull or whatever. I, I'm not so I'm not a hundred percent sure why they do it. I, I, I think that's the reason. Last you? No. Put one of the rafters on a pair of pulleys like a stadium cam. We're exploring solutions. Tessa. What is the stream's delay? Would it be reliable for a mod to pan it around remotely? It'd be fine. We I mean, it works for Starbase Live, and Discovery, go at throttle. Yeah, that's that works just fine. Nine five, nine five, brother. Yeah, there you go, Linux. Mm -hmm. It's fine, Elvis. I'm okay. Uh, anyway, so yeah, there's your hybrid tech solutions here. Now we got to get back to uh, let's get back to working on the rocket. Yeah, Creeper, no, I'm not having chat control the camera. It'll it'll just, you guys will just zoom it in on my crotch or something. Yeah, we're not doing that. No, yeah, hell no. Yeah, why, why would you even suggest that? That's not, yeah, nope. Nope, we're not doing that. But that would be coggers. Nope. Crotch cam when? I was joking. Yeah, let's yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, we don't we don't need to do that. EJ Dumpy Cam. Yeah, how about how about we don't do that? Anyway, let's get back to work on the stage. So the AP prototype here is the one that has This is the one that has the sequence separator. So with the correct separation mechanism. Uh, there are still some open tickets on our first stage that we gotta figure out. And that's going to get into some GSE design. we got to work on the umbilical. One, i got to figure out how this thing is going to interface to the pad so we can fill it up with fuel. So, also, we don't want the master craft file to have fuel in it out of the box. I was joking. Unless... And then the RCS control mechanisms. Uh, I want dedicated roll control thrusters, I think. Um, but we'll, we'll change this around. So I'm going to, now that we've gotten past like basic concepts for this, I'm going to do project Aries. We're going to make a new naming designation called PA, PA MLV first stage. All of this has been basically concepts up to here. So the first stage is pretty much figured out here. So let's save that. Project Aries, MLV first stage. This is, it's 7, 6, 22. I like putting notes here. Uh, we could put current wet and dry mass. We'll update that in a moment. Put it in its own subfolder. Uh, 
Yeah, I know, JDG. We got to be careful. Trust me, guys. Like, look, I, I, I love the suggestions, but honestly, Das knows more about remote streaming than anybody on the face of this planet. Like, seriously. I think maybe only the people that run SpaceX's cast, so I think Jammy might know a little bit more because Jammy builds streaming and production setups that stream from live stream from rockets. I think maybe maybe there's like one or two people that are foremost experts on live streaming remotely with pan tilt and zoom operations than like Das. So yeah, no, I'm Das and I will figure something out, and he he wants to help because Das goes at these these streaming production problems like uh like I go about like I go and hit these crack and tech problems. That's just food for him. He loves fig he loves figuring stuff out like that. <laughs> All right, we want a new folder. Project Aries. Create new folder. Project Aries. PA, MLV, first stage. Save. How do we... How do we get it to save in there? <clears throat> do we set the save directory? Yeah, SDX. I know what you mean. Hover over the save icon. Oh. Oh, that's cool. So now it's in there? Yeah, there it is. Cool. Excellent. Alright, so... We need open ticket items. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not do that just yet. Save that. We can get rid of the wet and dry mask. That was just for doing calculations. Is the subfolder thing new? Relatively, Chiron, yeah. <clears throat> okay, Sean. Yep, yep. Hey, Dipo. Uh, no mods, dude. I just used the two DLCs, and I have flag textures, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, thanks, dude. Yeah, I like using no mods because I like Kerbal looking like Kerbal. I want somebody to come in here that has the same version of Kerbal that I do. Be like, oh, I see what you did there. Your landing legs are just flags with in large panel mode attached to some wings. You know what I mean? I want people to see these parts and be like, oh, I know what part that is. Oh, I know what he was doing there. But the only, the only modifications that I have are flag packs. I have a bunch of flag packs here with like numbers, letters, and colors and patterns, and I even have I even have Russian characters if we wanted to make a Russian rocket, um, a Russian-styled rocket or something, and then I have my flag, and that's about it. Uh, if you guys want these flag packs, exclamation point flags in chat, yeah, you could download the same pack that I have. This is a Unix system. I know this. Yep. I see what you did there. Yep. So, and then the raceway is actually the same part. So that's why the raceway has just a blank flag on it. Those are just flags. Like, I can set them if we wanted to. We could set it to EJS. See that? But I set it to this nice off-white gray thing. So, okay. First stage here. Um... I'm going to reroute the first stage. Where do we want what what do we want the root part? That should be the root part, I think. We gotta be careful with doing part reroutes like this. Um we gotta make sure that we're on the hierarchy. Where's the root part right now? Okay, second stage avionics is root part. Project Ares is the is the is just my overall project, Cajun. So like, it, like Project Constellation or the Apollo program, Ares. This is the Ares program. This is and the MLV is one rocket in the Ares program. I don't have a name for this rocket just yet. It's not necessarily Falcon Nine. It's this is my own custom design. It's like a I, I took elements from Falcon Nine. It has Falcon Nine's landing legs because that's a good design, and I got it to work in KSP, which is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, this, this is really not like anything. I kind of, this ended up kind of 
the, it's funny because this rocket ended up kind of being a combination of Falcon and Delta, if anything, you know. But yeah, let's um. Okay, we need to reroute down here. So let me reroute to this. When do you separate in order to be able to control the booster's return phase? Oh, Dipo, yeah, I actually, if you pop back in the VOD about 30 minutes, I show, it, I show an ascent with this thing. So what I do, I set my staging velocity. I, I use staging velocity. I don't use altitude or anything else. I, I set staging velocity here. Uh, I always stage around 900 meters a second. And uh, what I do is I separate the second stage, right? Obviously, you separate. You know, first stage kind of just sits there for a second. I set the second stage in the way that I want it to go. And then, wait a second, we pop the fairing. And then I just let the second stage fly. I switch to the first stage using the bracket keys. And then I turn the first stage around and boost it back, right? And then I make sure that my first stage has a suborbital apogee, so the highest point is over 70 kilometers. That's the key. And when the first stage, I make sure that the apogee is over 70, and then I make sure I boost, boost it back. Uh, I basically boost it back so my incoming trajectory is at the island runway, or at least aligned with the island runway, more or less. And if you do that with an Apogee above 70, it'll put you right back down on KSC every time. Uh, more or less. You, you do have to steer, because even a slight, even slightly to one side is going to make you miss KSC by a mile. Uh, literally. Um, so, I do that. We do the boost back burn. When the booster goes over 70, I switch back to the second stage, circularize the second stage, once the second, once we get a nominal orbital insertion on the <coughs> on the second stage, I <coughs> sorry I'm getting over COVID still. I switch back to the first stage and we just land it. I steer, I turn the grid fins on, we steer it in, and basically just it should be relatively close to KSC, like I said. So we use the I use the grid fins to compensate for any weird boost back trajectories, and I steer it in, and I could basically get it. I can get this thing within 100 meters of the pad every time, if not even closer. And the, the more I fly it, the more accurate we'll get. We are basically 100 meter close out of the box. It flies great. The, using the landing, making the legs out of wings <coughs> ends up, these ends up, end up working like chimes. And I have a pretty damn good theory that Falcon 9 does that too. And Super Heavy has chimes going up the side because it doesn't have landing legs. I'm pretty sure SpaceX knows that they can get additional cross range out of the booster. So basically they can steer it and fly it in like an airplane almost, right? Not like an airplane, but you do have lift being generated along the center of mass, right? Because the booster's flying and then you have grid fins out back. So they can steer Falcon 9 in. I mean, you could, it's not gonna fly level like an airplane, but this actually really helps in KSP because wings are super overpowered in the stock game. They're, they generate insane amounts of lift for the surface area. But once again, that's because Kerbal isn't a direct simulation of real life, right? But yeah, I could between the wings generating all that lift and my grid fins and everything, this thing, yeah, it steers like a dream. You can, I can get it back to the pad almost every time. Those are some nice legs. Thanks, man. All right, so this is our first stage craft file, so we need to reroute. I need to reroute to there. Okay, I already did that. And then we need to separate the second stage. But we got to be we got to be careful because before, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to reroute back up to my second stage avionics for a moment, and then we're going to make another save. This is MLV stack prototype. Okay, save that, make sure that it's saved in the right folder. It did. And now, <coughs> I'm gonna load the first stage file back up. <coughs> um, there's the cal controller for the separating separation sequencer. 
it pushes away similar to Falcon 9. I just have... Because I want these to be reusable, I don't want to rely solely on a decoupler, even though that's how I do connect this. The second stage is connected on a docking port and a decoupler. And that goes... This kind of... The second stages are disposable right now. And I might make them reusable in the future, but... The second stage being disposable, yeah. I'll just pop... You pop that off when you're flying the first stage back down so it can, um... So we have an open docking port for reintegration. Um, all right. So we also need to work on getting the second stage in its own craft file. But this is for the first stage. So let's go right here. Set. We set that as root and separate that. Okay. There's our separator mechanism. And now, if I've looked at this right, it should have gotten rid of the decoupler trigger right there. When we reintegrate, guys, we need to add the second stage decoupler in here. That needs to be a step during integration, because if we don't... Uh, yeah, we'll go to separate, and these will push on the second stage, and yeah, nothing will happen. Hey, Alex. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, Mikey, I can do it pretty much in real time. Yeah, it works, man. I've done plenty of testing, dude. And once again, with the right booster design, right, this is... I made this thing... I mean, dude, I have, like easily into the five figures of hours played in this game. It's easily over 10,000 hours. I lost track, dude. I have no idea what it is. I've been playing Kerbal 40 hours a week almost since 2015. And we work on all different types of stuff. I've built shuttles. We've built Venture Stars. Right now, I'm trying to build a purpose-built application booster for my mission mode save. My mission mode 2 save. It's a set of rules that we go by that are... It's basically a hardcore career mode save. Where chat basically decides the overall mission. Now, don't get me wrong. I've kind of taken a hiatus from it in the past six months. Because, yeah. After playing Kerbal for like seven years straight, I needed a break. <laughs> so we've been playing other games. But we're getting back into it, man. I'm getting back into what I doing what I love. Um, so... Yeah, this was built for my Mission Mode 2 save. So, right now we're in an Engineering Mode save. But I have the Mission Mode save. Mission Mode save has no quick loads, no revert. Do it right the first time. And do your homework and do the Engineering right. Because if you blow it up, you blow it up. You lose money. It is in career. And chat does fund the missions. Chat gets to vote. I have a polling system integrated in with my website. And chat does get to vote on the mission goals. So, like... Right now, the mission goal, when I stopped playing mission mode back in December, the goal is set to go to the moon. Uh, my human Kerbal space program, is, Kerbal space program is set to go to the moon right now. And that's what we're going to do. And I'm designing boosters to do that right now to kind of get back in. Normally, get back into it. Normally, what I would be doing is I would be doing the research and development in mission mode. But because I'm trying to get my feet wet again, I'm doing the engine. I'm doing it in engineering mode. So, yeah, the tests don't cost anything. EJ proposes and chat disposes. Is the second stage landing all done with retrograde burns, or do you use parachutes as well, Mikey? My second stage is not reusable right now. The baseline that I wanted for the MLV does not have second stage reuse incorporated into it. However. With my separation mechanism and a docking port integration right here, we can, we could do that. We could make our second stage reusable. I could bring it back down and land it. I'm still, I'm not 100% sure how we would do that, but it's doable. I can make it happen. Um, this is a 375 core. So 375 opens up payload bays opens up the idea of a payload bay to be used instead of a payload fairing. See what I'm talking about? 
Yeah, Alex, it's... Th once again, it's very similar to Falcon 9. This is very similar to Falcon 9's separator mechanism. So, we could go to this in the long run if we wanted to. Um... I kind of want to do that, but it's not part of my mission scope right now. The MLV is going to have a disposable second stage and just a regular payload fairing for a little while. Uh, we could do it, though. It's possible. I could make the second stage Starship in. I could make it have folding wings just like Starship and land, come down and land like Starship. Not. I've tried catching boosters before, and I tried making Mechazilla. You can make Mechazilla. It is an insane amount of parts, and it would be really difficult to get that to work right, but it's possible. I could do it. We can catch boosters. I, I've done it. Um, albeit just with a prototype, like boosting a booster up and then having it come back down and land in, in the catch arms. I've, I've made it. It does work. Uh... But it does put a lot of stress on the game, and it is a ton of parts. So I'm thinking not, like, if I do second stage reuse and we have it fly like Starship where it flips over and lands, uh, basically it, where it does this right here, um, I'll just have it land next to the pad, and then we'll just pick it up and move it. <clears throat> the landing leg joints work just fine, Alex. Yeah. So, we gotta go to the to-do GSE integration uh, umbilical attachment point is the outstanding one. Um, the next thing that I wanted to do is add roll control thrusters in. Dedicated roll control thrusters. This will increase the part count on the stage a little bit, but I noticed that there are some times where I'm steering the stage in and not having a dedicated roll control thruster really does bite me. Comes back to bite me, so I'll set that RCS for roll and roll only. Uh, show actuation toggles, okay. What about you guys down here? Okay, cool. And now, because those are set to roll only, these ones can be set to yaw only. And then those ones, show actuation, can be set to pitch only. So I have two pitch thrusters, I have two yaw thrusters, and two roll thrusters. That'll give me better control over everything. Uh, show actuator toggles. No translation control? These are just for steering, dude. These are just for reorienting the stage when we're coming in and landing. They're not... We don't need translational control here. Those ones should be set to yaw. 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 Roll. Pitch, pitch. Just make sure we're set correctly up here. Hey. Hello. Uh, are you hungry? No, not really. Okay. How about you? Yeah, I made burgers. Oh. Yeah, I'll have some of those on break, baby. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I love you. My wife, or fiance. Chat says hi, by the way. Yep, no, she's gone. Okay. All right. Now that leaves our umbilical attachment system. We got to figure out a way to get that to work a little bit better, but that's going to really be done later during integration testing. Burger time, Remo. Okay. So 
First stage is baselined here. What's our current part count? Oh, it's 400 parts. Ugh, that's a lot for a first stage. But it is reusable, like I said, so. Have you recovered from the COVID? Wouldn't be here if I wasn't. <coughs> I'm still coughing a little bit, but that's okay. When am I gonna make it? Uh, that's next year, Linux. House is this year. Waifu prototype. What's the current part count? If you have to ask, your computer can't afford it. What's the most part intensive system here? Landing legs. How long till the moving day? We're moving throughout August, JDG. I'm, I haven't really thought about the intricacies to how I'm going to move the streaming setup and whatnot, but we'll get to that. That looks like, Del it looks like if Delta 4 and Falcon 9 had a baby. That's kind of what I was going for. Song so, uh, I'll take it, dude, I'll take it, yeah. I personally, like, I'm a little bit on the older side. Uh, not not super old. I know there's viewers that are older than me. I get it. But there's a lot of viewers that are also way younger than me, too. Um, when I was growing up, when I was in high school, Delta Four was like the new hotness, you know? So I kind of kind of dating myself there a little bit. But Delta Four was like, that was the hotness. So I've always liked Delta. I grew up with it. Now this generation of space nerds is all, they're, they're all Falcon 9 and that's all, that's fine. Falcon 9's amazing, it's awesome. It's everything that Delta IV was supposed to do and more. Um, a lot of people don't know that Delta IV was supposed to built for rap, it was built for to be rapidly launched. It was built to have a lot of launches, but that ended up never happening because the launch market crashed, but that's a whole big story that I won't get into today. Um, so I always, Delta always holds a candle in my heart, so. It's a Falcon Elta 9-4 heavy. Yeah. But remember, th that th the resemblance is... I didn't build it purposely to be like Delta IV and Falcon kind of combined. I built this thing to work well in Kerbal, and that's it. <clears throat> it just ended up looking like Falcon 9 and Delta combined. Hey, Kronos, 15-month resub. Whoosh! Thanks. Yeah, JD. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Luck, luckily with this move, our first move is, you know, we have a month to figure it out. Felton 4. Delton 9. 6. Delcon 5.5 5 heavy. Super. Yeah, JDG. Yeah, where did all this stuff come from? Wait, moving. Did you get the house? We did, Admiral. Mm -hmm. Vec, Vec, Vecna. Grav shark, where are you going, Grav shark? You can't escape burn time, Grav shark. It's time to burn. Oh yeah, I gotta turn the thrust limiters back up here. <laughs> okay. What would be your Vecna song? Are we talking about a song that I would... Are we talking about a song that I would spoilers because spoilers in the spoilers spoilers? Are we, is that what we're talking about? It wouldn't be Master of Pup Puppets. I would get DMCA'd. Um, Hellion. Electric Eye. Yeah, because spoilers. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, it would be, it would be Electric Eye, the Hellion. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, no spoilers though, no spoilers. I actually guessed spoilers, but I didn't get the extra spoilers at the end right. But I was able to spoilers, I was able to figure out what spoilers is because spoilers. But also, yeah, really, really good. Watch Stranger Things. 
I'm electric, electric spy. Hey, Springers, what's going on, man? Wait a sec, why are you building in the SPH? Stonks, I like building in here because I can do this. You can do this with the camera. I can move the camera around and zoom in on things uh, that allows for much more precise building. Anyway, let's go back into the full stack prototype. And now let's get the second stage figured out here. I did notice some things with the second stage that I need to fix. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I know. W yeah, exactly, dude. It's a great, it's a great season. You should watch Stranger Things, guys. And I don't throw recommendations around willy-nilly. It's pretty damn good. I just wish that spoilers didn't spoilers, though. But, hey, it is what it is. All right, so let's switch to... This is MLV second stage here. Make sure it's saved in the project areas folder. There we go. So this is the second stage, MLV second stage master craft file. Okay. Now we have that set as root part on the stack prototype. So we need to actually, yep. Set the docking port as root. And now we need to detach the first stage. There it is. And now my second stage has, yeah, see, now we have the hold points here. Those, that's where the, we align and attach to the second stage, or first stage to second stage right there. Those, those uh, hybrid tech uh, balls. So how many parts did this end up being? Yeah, it's like freaking, first stage is 400 parts. The second stage in the payload fairing is 39. <laughs> Expendable versus reusable, man. If you don't name a version of this thing MLV, MLV Pro, you missed an opportunity. <laughs> Wouldn't it be MLG? <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I noticed something here. We have an alignment problem with this. And also, yeah, I don't want the autopilot systems in there from the start. So get rid of that, get rid of that. And then we don't need that docking port either out of the box. So just save that. Do you have any experience using the physics range extender mod? I don't really use any mods, Mikey. I haven't used a mod in KSP in years. I like playing the stock game, dude. It's just fun. It's just how I get down, man. <coughs> <coughs> so what I noticed here is that somewhere during the during production, so if we save this, yeah. Yeah, we didn't I didn't get that exactly right. Hmm. I wonder why we didn't get I didn't get that forward skirt correct. It's okay. This is a master craft file, so I don't know why it, I don't know what, I'm, I'm curious to why I didn't absolute snap this thing. I always use absolute snap to try and make sure everything is aligned. And I noticed that we're halfway in between two absolute points right there with our forward skirt fairing, which is very strange. Huh. I don't know, should we just leave it? It's fine, like it works, we know it works, but I'll know that it's not really aligned. Is there any, now, I mean, don't get me wrong, we could remake, I could remake it, I could fix it in two seconds, but I wouldn't really make this mistake right here. However, however, um, now I'm wondering if 
I did it for a reason. I wouldn't generally offset the payload fairing like that. To not use absolute. So there's either a reason, I either A made a mistake or there's a reason why that's like that. And I'm not sure which one it is. Hey. Hey, what's up, baby? Um, I was gonna clean a grill and then I, oh, I like pulled it off the, the thing, right? And I noticed it's got that metal, like electrical box almost? Yeah, it's where the, the prongs attach for the grill. We have an electric grill. Yeah, so do, can I still clean it? Like yeah. in the sink? Yeah, of course. It's not connected to anything, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's all, yeah, it's stainless. Okay, I- Just hit it with, hit it, you gotta hit it with the, um, uh, steel wool. Okay, but it can't like go in the dishwasher. Right? You can put it in the dishwasher if you wanted to. Even with those things? I would hand wash it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hand wash it and then dry it out. Okay. And then put it all back together. You got to make sure it's dry though, because you don't want to you don't want to put it back in and then have moisture get trapped in there and then turn the thing on. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. It smells Thanks. good, baby. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. It didn't turn out too bad. Cool. I'm protected, electric grill. Yeah, drummer didn't pay the gas bill. Bro, Tara, she's pretty chicks like that. Yeah, we're way past that, man. We're way past that, Jerry. Okay. Prudus Trees, the electric grill. Protect. Did infected electric grill. It's a great song, man. All right. So there's two things going on here. Either I did this on purpose or I just made a mistake. I'm going to chalk that one up to making a mistake. So I'm going to fix it. And if this comes back to bite us later, well, we'll, we'll know. Um, so let me... Here, another awesome tip here that you know you can use um, another good good pro tip here so take a cubic octag right take it take another cubic octag and then attach them together like that so where, where you move one you move the other take a strut put these struts together and make sure that you set absolute and you snap both of them into the right spot and now you have a ruler. Very, very useful for sculpting fairings and whatnot. Hey, Gilmir, hope you had a great holiday. Yeah, it was fine. And now... Oh, there, there it is. Interesting. It's an absolute snap point. There you go. Now my question is... So we have docking port. Docking port is set to an absolute. This is set not to absolute. And why does that snap correctly? Oh, it's the fairing. That's why that's like that. Okay. I have the fairing adjusted to set for an absolute snap point. That's why I did that that way. It did, I didn't make a mistake. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's set for an absolute point. I had the fairing end at a certain distance. So that was on purpose. Good. We just proved it. Excellent. Leave it like that. Don't screw with it. That's good because all of my flight data analysis that we've been doing uh, over the last couple of weeks, like launching it with the autopilot and everything, uh, that means that that data is still relevant because, uh, yeah, this was intended. It wasn't a mistake. Is there any difference in the offset between the couple docking port position and a dock docking port position? Yes. It's a couple millimeters, rocket guy. I proved it with my the D-pass test. Uh, in my engineering mode craft file, I have something called the DPAS. It's a docking port attachment system test. I basically have a craft file that just has docking ports moving up and down. And I have like a docking port in a... Um, so coupled would be the nodes and then dock. Coupled and docked are different. They're different, different distances. Oh yeah. What I do to overcome that problem is whenever I attach 
Whenever I attach two docking ports together and use that as a primary structural carrier on the hierarchy, so when this is on the main hierarchy in KSP, I always make sure to absolute snap. The absolute snap will put a space in between the docking ports. You can see it. See that white part right there? You can see right through to the, to the other side of the SPH. Now, I, I have a little bit of a millimeter separation there. It's a couple mil at best, a couple thousandths of an inch or something. Uh, it's not it's not it's not very big um, now the reason why I do that is because when I dock these together I know that there's going to be overlap this docking port is gonna be somewhere right in there it's like that's about it right there that's about the overlap so I know rocket guy that when I go to attach this and we're using we use same vessel collision on the fairings as a, as the structural flange to hold these two things together I know there's going to be some tension there that docking port's going to be pulling down on it like a torqued bolt that's how I get around it because guys uh, I don't know if I see a lot of newer faces in here if you guys don't know how I go about building things the reason why I have all these alignment mechanisms and why payload fairing and second stage are attached via docking port is because I build the rockets outside of the SPH and the VAB. I build my own pads. I, I make my own fuel farms, my own launch plate. My We build the cranes like you saw one. I build cranes and stuff to be able to put the vehicle together. The idea is that when my first stage comes back down and lands, I could take it, pick it up, put it back on the pad, put a new second stage, put a new payload on it, fill it up with fuel and launch it again. That's the idea. Hey, Moose, what's going on? Midge, Miss Pinter is here. <coughs> yep, pretty much, typo. Yep, it's been my entire Kerbal career. Now we need this. Doesn't exist in the game. Let's build it ourselves. No, where? <laughs> I heard about Starship. It's so hype. Yeah, Moose, dude. Yeah, no, we all are. I'm ready, dude. Did you see S24's paint job? It's pretty cool. Bro, if you want to be so realistic, just pay, play RSSRO. Playing in RSSRO would just make all the stuff that I do like three times as difficult. And it, it wouldn't factor... The difficulty wouldn't factor so much in all the stuff that I do here, but it would factor in because you're, the Delta V requirements are so much more. I don't really see the need to play RSSRO. And also, my stick stonks has always been to play the stock game but manipulate stock Kerbal in a way that's plausibly realistic. That's all. My forward skirts, tank mechanisms, like how I put this all together, you notice there's fairings at the front. This is all plausibly realistic. This rocket could exist in real life. And that's just not me saying like, oh, I built it in Kerbal so it could exist in real life. No, I study how these stupid things go together. I've been doing it for years. The idea is that I, you know, with stock KSP, I can implement it relatively quick it doesn't take forever to get it right. It's a little bit more forgiving, and it makes it a little bit easier for me as a streamer to be able to convey the content correctly. That and I like playing stock KSP because I like showing people what the game can do. So I tried to, been trying to figure out a way to kind of combine all those over the years, and the best way to do it is not playing RSSRO. Yeah, I mean... I could play RSSRO, that would be fine. I don't see why it would be so really... Oh, RSSRO is such a challenge. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I know it's a challenge, but I know it's involved. Like, it's just literally more Delta V numbers. And before people say, well, it's actually more complicated. Than yeah, I, I know. I know. I know. Do you want me to spend six months building a launch vehicle, or do you want me to spend a year? Because in RSSRO, it would take me years. It would take, it would, it would take a year to do... The same amount of development because we have so much more to test. You know, with our SSRO, we have to test engine restarts, etc., etc., etc. Do we really want to get into that? Like, I, dude, I wouldn't mind it. I would, I could do it, sure, no problem. But I like keeping it relatively quick and easy with stock KSP to implement the stuff and get it done. You know what I mean? I already am slow as it is. It's already slow to build this stuff. Like, look, I. What have I done today? I've separated out a bunch of craft files today because I have to explain everything. With RSSRO, I would still be explaining things. I wouldn't even have the craft files separated out yet. You know what I'm saying? It's just not worth it. Alright, so, 
We know that that fairing offset was on purpose, so that's good. So, second stage, we'll save that out, and we'll finalize the second stage craft file for now. Uh, we, I did take the autopilot out. I don't want the autopilot in it just yet. We have a, just a regular octo probe core, which would be good for a baseline that's just a heading hold. It'll work just fine. I'm debating whether we should put an attitude control system in on the second stage. I think that would probably be smart to do. But the real question is how? How are we going to do it and how are we going to have it maneuver around our already existing mechanism here? <laughs> that doesn't look too bad with the shroud there like that, huh? But I think the shroud is a... Oh no, it's not a different shape. That's... Yeah, that'll work. That looks just fine. I kept it like that on purpose. I think I did that so we could have space for stuff. So the collider wouldn't take up a lot of places. Or a lot of space. Do we want RCS on this? I, I, I think we should. I think we should. I think I should put a monoprop system on this thing. I need this thing to be able to do precise low carbon orbit insertion, so I think that putting one of these in would probably be a good idea. It's not going to need much. And we just got to make sure that it doesn't mess with the separator systems that I already have in place. And that's, that right there is the reason why I did this aft skirt in a spacer right there. So I would have space around these systems. We don't need translation authority, Alex. That'll be for whatever the second stage, the payload. The, the translation set will be for payload. I'm not docking second stages together. Not with, well, at least not with this design. I could modify it to do that if I wanted to, but I'm not, not really doing that. Would not be easier to use the Vector RCS so it uses the same fuel, one less tank to refill. Second stages are expendable, Tessa? My second stages are expendable right now. If we switch to a reusable design down the road, then yeah, sure. That would be a really good idea. And like I said, this is not really designed to go very far. Maybe we can use something like Atlas here. All right, hang on. That doesn't seem to get in the way of any particular thrusters here. Wouldn't that be necessary for precise orbital injection? <coughs> Translate authority on one axis though, Alex. I'm not talking about like doing rendezvous proximity operations. I, I would want pitch, yaw, roll, and then forward and that's it. So yeah, these, these translational thrusters I suppose would be the right move. We could... That's the tiny one, we don't want that. We could, I'm pretty sure you can set this to that configuration if you really want to. <clears throat> yeah, those are, that's actually not gonna work too well because those are outside of the uh, okay.
You know, it would be cool if we mounted the tanks Atlas style. Atlas style has the tanks kind of hanging down with the engines like this. You know what, Tessa, I, I think because verniers, verniers would probably be a good idea just to keep the part count down. Yeah, it would be less parts. Then we, but if we do this, we don't have any translational control. Yeah, I see. I'm not 100% sure how we're going to do this. We could put the pods on the tanks next to the engine. Wouldn't be a bad way to do it. That's out of the way of everything from what I can tell. Cliders aren't going to interfere. thruster going so can we do one two three and then four no I don't mind mounting these on the bottom of the tanks like this that's totally cool I like I said I left a lot of space in this design to do stuff like that so that gives us a translate thruster it gives us a pitch thruster we have roll thrusters, and we don't have any yaw. So if I go into mirror sim, right, and we do something like that. There we go. You know that if you paint it red, it'll be faster. Well, with rockets, orange is the color that makes you go faster. Orange. With cars, Ganja, you're absolutely right. Painting the car red will absolutely add, like, 10 horsepower. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example. Here, look. See? Orange. This rocket goes really fast because it goes to the moon. 25,000 miles an hour. It's orange. See what I'm talking about? It's a pretty good example. Also, this is a picture from my buddy Trevor. Uh, Trevor Malman, who is a very, 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 very good launch photographer. Go go check him out here. I'll, I'll link him up if you guys want to go find some pictures. No, you were pretty much right, Ganja. It's orange, though. Orange. <laughs> See what I mean about Trevor's pictures? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh man, that thing is beast mode. It just needs a better upper stage. But it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, slow. Yeah, it, yeah, it's about the passion. That's okay, it's about the passion. <coughs> so if those thrusters are 100%, and those thruster blocks are set to the RCS FX power to its one kilonewton of thrust. 
These ones are set to two. I don't want my yaw control to be more powerful than anything else, so I set I should set this to 50 and then make sure my actuation toggles are correct. <clears throat> and then these ones I removed from symmetry because I'm an idiot and I hit the wrong button. Actually, it'd be better if we attached them to the fairing. Gotta go. All right, Linux. Last, please. Hey, Zay. ULA just uploaded the Atlas V rocket cam. Yeah, I saw it. They posted it on Twitter earlier. How was your weekend? Feeling better? My weekend was fine. I had a great fourth. <coughs> I'm still... <coughs> Every time I talk about it, I cough. I am feeling better, also I got addicted to Jupiter Direct, so today's Curse Rockets will be very interesting. You have two pods acting on the pitch axis, so they have the same thrust as a single nozzle. You know what, that's a very good point. So two at one, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So this one can actually, that'll even it out. Save that, and now set our actuation toggles here. These ones need to be set to pitch, roll, and fore aft. Pitch, roll, fore aft. There we go. I don't like how that's kind of hanging in 3D space right there, but it's all right. Also, you don't need yaw thrusters, just roll 90, then pitch. Uh, that could create for some weird orientational problems on mission, Tessa. I'm not doing I don't want to do that. I, I, I think it's better to just do this this way. Uh, I'll take the two-part count hit. I don't mind taking a two-part count hit because it's a physicsless part. I, I'm okay with it. Yeah, tuck those in a little bit. Yeah, I like those I like those thrusters out like that. I'm wondering if actually is there a singular thruster variant? Nope, it's just that. If I could just get rid of that one then we'd be good to go, but yeah, no, this way will work. Good for the second stage. It was just a min-max option. Yeah. I think that's a mail rocket engine. For, designed for delivering the mail. You know, I can tell. The little balls. <clears throat> anyway. Stop! You tell because of the way it is. All right, so I don't think there's any particular anything else particular with the second stage. I think we're good. So I'm gonna save this, and in the second stage action group or the second stage group, we will get rid of that, and then we will shut off interstage nodes there. We don't want that. I only the only thing I want to be able to be attached to is that. Now. I don't have a second stage alignment mechanism like we do for the first stage. Hip, am I planning on making this recoverable? Expendable at first, we'll explore recoverability design options later. Go. Okay. Yeah, 28 parts on my damn second stage.
I always like putting my serial numbers on this thing. Side by side doesn't really look right though. You know what, we'll do over under. Yeah. What was the max lifting capacity of Condor? Odd question, I know. Condor could do 18 tons into low carbon orbit. It was basically right in line with some details. It was right in line with Falcon 9. It's basically a Falcon 9 in KSP. This thing is a little bit past a Falcon 9. This is like if you took Vulcan's numbers and combine them with Falcon 9. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a little bit more of a heavy duty vehicle. So we're, we'd end up being somewhere between, <coughs> um, <coughs> you know what? I don't like that. The side by side numbers would look better. Um, where we'd end up being somewhere in between, uh, like New Glenn and Falcon 9 in terms of like reusability. Once again, this is a vehicle that is this vehicle is, this vehicle is basically designed to be a Kerbalized, it's really specialized for Kerbal. And I gave it 18 tons to Leo capacity, and it actually has a little bit more. It's a little bit over what I wanted, which is good. Technically, the second stage is a little bit too big. Uh, um, the second stage usually has about a thousand Delta V left over. Actually, yeah, it, yeah. If I could cut this tank down, like cut an eighth off of this tank, it'd be good. That's usually what it has left. Uh, actually, ho hold on a second. Um, the payload fairing isn't attached, so just let me put this here and then I'll put a big ore tank here to represent the payload fairing. Shut off the fuel right there. Uh, it usually has about a thousand Delta V left over with this amount of payload. So that's more or less where it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit too much, but that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pay for that extra thousand in fuel. Gives me a little bit more capability, meaning this thing could shoot stuff. It could shoot a small enough payload towards the moon, but Unless I had a third stage uh, inside of the fairing or some kind of service module, hint, hint. Um, yeah, it's not really good for much else. Too late for a smaller tank? We could. I could do a smaller tank, but what smaller tank? The only... The only tank that's smaller is this one. And where, what is that gonna, where is that gonna get us? You see what I mean? If I could get three quarters of this tank, it'd be perfect. But, yeah, we don't, so... Will you crew rate this? It's crew rated. Part of the reason why I have this stuff on there. It's all crew rated. So, yeah, if we had a little bit of procedural tank action here, Hip, it could be more. But once again, this thing could put... Let's see. Routinely, I'm getting to 100 by 100 circular with 18 tons of payload, and I have 1,000 Delta V left over. Um, that's where I'm routinely ending up with this thing. So that, what would that end up being? Uh, yeah, I could do 18 tons TLI, which is pretty damn good, actually. That's... Yeah, that's actually, like I said, this rocket is like halfway between Falcon Heavy and New Glenn. Or Falcon 9 and, not Falcon Heavy. It's halfway between Falcon 9 and New Glenn, and believe it or not, those... Those numbers are pretty right on. New Glenn could... New Glenn could move more than 20 tons TLI, if I'm thinking about this correctly. Because... It's payload capacity... Actually, hold on. Let me th let me think for a second. 
New Glenn's payload capacity, I believe, is rated at like 60, 70 tons, somewhere around there to low Earth orbit. Just do some basic kind of Delta V napkin math in my head. Actually, New Glenn could probably do like 5 to 10 tons TLI, so this thing is in more, more in line, believe it or not, with New Glenn than it is with Falcon 9. Yeah, it's more like a New Glenized rocket. That's just what I needed for expectations. That's what I wanted. I designed it this way on purpose. But yeah, one of the things that one of the unknowns unknowns that I didn't get is that I would need a hybrid tank design here. I'd need a tank that could I could cut in half here. But you know what? I'd rather keep it simple because with the second stage right now, because the first stage is so ridiculously complicated. I don't want to get into like, I don't want to get into like, oh, we can we can combine a bunch of smaller tanks here. You know, we could buy we could put that in there and that'll give us the right fuel proportions. I don't want to get into doing stuff like that. I just want to keep the second stage symbol. Symbol? Simple, idiot. You know what? I'll do a three-letter naming convention here. 201. Second stage, and then the serial number. I think we'll do that for the first stage as well, because that fits over the over this a little bit better. And then, give me the flag again up here. See, this is what I mean. Do all this stuff. I do all this stuff to finalize out the stage. What's TLI? Translunar injection is what it stands for, Ice. TLI is... <clears throat> okay, so if you think about a rocket going up into space, right? You have low Earth orbit, which is basically just or a, a low altitude orbit around Earth, right? Translunar injection is the type of burn that you need to do to get, you know, TLI burns are usually done from Earth, from a low Earth orbit, right? That TLI burn is basically a burn that shoots your payload towards the moon. It's, it's, the, it's the rocket engine firing that gets you to go towards the moon. That's all. In Kerbal, you need about 800 Delta V to do a translunar injection burn to get to Mun. In real life, you need... So in Kerbal, you need about 800 meters a second. In real life, you need about 5,000 meters a second, give or take, if I'm remembering right. Since I mostly live in the aviation world, do reusable rockets need tail registries as they're basically aircraft at that point? No, it's classified on a different... It, it, doesn't, ha it doesn't have a tail number. We, we do go by serial number, Dipo to, uh, to d differentiate the boosters so we know which boosters are being reused. SpaceX is nice enough to paint the serial number on it. But yeah, I don't think they work like that just yet. Maybe Starship will in the future, though. Those small RCS tanks at the base for separation... Those small RCS tanks at the base for separation... It was 3.4 kilometers a second for capstone. Hmm, interesting. TLI... It's... Rocket Guy, if you're doing a straight home and transfer and not a ballistic trajectory, that's, that's what capstone did. It just kept boosting, right? The photon kept boosting it. That is... Isn't that... That's more efficient, right? I've been noodling on what ATC will look like for orbital traffic and some space fiction I'm working on. Yeah. Actually, Dipo, you know what's really freaking cool? Like, they, uh... So, the ISS, right? If you really want to look into this stuff, look at how ISS RPOD works. Rendezvous proximity and docking. Rendezvous proximity operations and docking. RPOD. RPOD, when a spacecraft goes up to the uh, space station, is... So... 
you know how if you're flying IFR, for instance, you know, you're on center, right? So you're coming, say you're, say you're arriving at your destination IFR, right? You, you tune to center and then center hands you over to the tower, right? And you go to tower and the tower will put you in a pattern, right? And that pattern, that circ, you know, like it's kind of a, it's not circularizing around, like flying around the airport per se, but you could if they put you in a holding pattern, right? Uh, you basically turn and you're doing a radius around the airport until you get a line with a runway and then you turn and you, you go in and you follow the waypoints, right? Rendezvous proximity operations and docking works literally the same. Yeah, it's the same thing, only it's in three dimensions. Um, so I know that air, airplanes are in three dimensions as well. Um, uh, but yeah, you're in three dimensions because you can maneuver anywhere. So when they do rendezvous proximity operations and docking, when a spacecraft gets near the ISS, it enters the ISS um, approach ellipsoid, which is like the holding pattern for an airport. You know, if they're if you're coming in and the active runway is in the opposite direction, you have to go around, not go around like airplane terms. You fly around to that, to you're lined up with a runway and then you line up and go, right? Um, you have a, an approach ellipsoid that works basically like that. <clears throat> when a spacecraft gets into the approach ellipsoid, they turn the spacecraft and they align it with the docking port runway, right? And then once you're once you're lined up at the approach ellipsoid, you're cleared to land on that runway. There's an imaginary runway that lines up with each docking port on the ISS, and uh, then you move in, and <clears throat> you know how like airports have a no-fly zone. You, you don't fly over runways unless the tower says you can, unless you're on, unless you're above 18,000 feet, right? Then you can fly over it all you want. You don't like take a Cessna and fly over through like an international airport. That's how the FAA gets mad at you. There's a keep-out sphere. <clears throat> There's a keep-out sphere on the ISS. And that keep-out sphere is the flight restricted area. You don't you don't go in the keep-out sphere unless mission control says you can go in the keep-out sphere. It works very similar to airplanes, believe it or not. It's 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 kind of similar. It's along the same it's the same idea. You just don't you don't want to do anything dumb when you're near the ISS. It's just like you don't want to do anything dumb except you don't want to do anything dumb and you just want to land the runway or land the land the runway. You want to land the plane on the runway when the tower says for you to do that because that's what's booked in your flight plan, right? Just do what the tower says. It's the same idea. Yeah, it's called Rendezvous Proximity Operations and Docking, RPOD. If you want to look up how that stuff works with the real space flight, uh, with like real spacecraft moving around. The ISS basically has an air traffic control, air traffic control, and the astronauts or cosmonauts on board are can basically take control of the spacecraft if they need to but the spacecraft usually does it automatically just like at ILS uh, or RNAV it, RNAV or RNAV VNAV stuff like that it works like that the, the spacecraft basically just docks itself but you can take manual control just like a pilot could override the ILS if something went wrong you know it's the same exact idea Yeah, there's no there's no track on, there's no centers for spacecraft yet. That's not really how they work. When we have multiple space stations, hopefully in the future, that it could work that way. Um, you just have mission control. Mission control is your center control. They're your tower, and they're your ground control. Like it's all it's all kind of combined into one in space. But when there's multiple space stations, I'm sure each space station will have its own mission control and you'll have like it'll be like towers at an airport. Pretty much. How in trouble would someone be in if Dragon buzzed the cupola on the ISS? You'd be outgassing inside of the keep out sphere. Hip, which is a big no no. Um the ISS is only really designed to have RCS outgassed on it in certain axes. Um, those, those huge solar panels, right? If you're firing your thrusters too close, well, the solar panels are basically cloth. It's basically cloth, and it'll work like a sail. And you could put, you could put, um, uh, 
what load would this be? Tension load on the truss segment. Yeah, they that was they figured that out when they were doing Space Station Freedom back in the day. That the shuttle outgassing the the solar panels would basically work like a sail and the the entire ISS will wiggle if you outgas too much. That's why the keep out sphere is there. You do not want to fire your RCS too close. You could damage the solar panels, you could damage the radiators, you could do a lot of bad stuff. This is why the shuttles always did a, always did a V-bar approach. <clears throat> yep, it's all, the ISS is only designed to receive from, from one direction with the shuttle. Exactly. Yep, because if it tried to dock like top down, if it tried to go to the Nadir or the Zenith port, you'd screw up the solar panels. Top, Tom Cruise can go to space in Top Gun 3 then. Sure, sure. Unless you're Harrison Ford. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I get the joke. <laughs> so Starship will have that problem as well? Starship will basically only be able to dock on the same vector as the space shuttle if they ever send... If the ISS is even around when Starship is flying. He can't because he'll buzz the tower. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. You, you know what the you know what the crazy thing is they use differential eccentricity to you can do a fly you could do a flyby around the space station if you really wanted to if the mission pertained for it uh, they NASA can do it with differential eccentricity basically you get inside the approach ellipsoid and it, you have a your orbit is slightly more eccentric than the ISS and if the ISS is going this way and you have a slightly eccentric orbit you can make it look like your craft will just do this around the ISS as it's moving. Um, you can use differential eccentricity. In fact, NASA does that all the time. If you want to move a spacecraft to a different docking port, right? Say, say they have a dragon and they undock a dragon from uh, the V-bar port and they want to go to the R-bar port. So you're going from node, you're going from IDA2 to IDA3 on the top of the space station, right? You undock and then you get outside of the keep out sphere and then you you basically do a maneuver to change your orbital inclination so this backing off maneuver will change the apogee of the orbit and then you could just turn the craft to stay pointed at the ISS and it'll look like your craft will do this they do that all the time they use differential eccentricity to make to maneuver around the ISS but they never do that inside of the keep out sphere because you don't want to wreck the space station by firing a thruster into a module. That yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah, you exactly. Walking safety ellipse is the maneuver. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, they'll basically it'll look like you're just orbiting around the ISS. It's really cool. It's really smart, actually. And that is something, if you have persistent rotation, you can do that in KSP. Oh, yeah. You can absolutely do that in KSP, which is pretty rad. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's really, really interesting. It's really neat. Okay, so our second stage is pretty much good to go here. Um, was there anything that I missed? Oh yeah, 201 and we were, I have the flag. I like the flag. Actually, the flag probably would be cooler on the, on the skirt up here. Cause you wouldn't have it, you wouldn't have it painted on the spray on foam insulation. Except for that, maybe the serial number, but eh, it's fine. 201. Okay. I think we're clear here with the with this. Amazing news. So alleviate a worm logo? Or I could put I could put it on there, sure. Amazing news. My second child, Grayson, was born yesterday weighing eleven. 11 pounds, 2 ounces. So happy, chilling with... <laughs> so happy, chilling with you, with him asleep on you. Hey, alleviate. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. Dude. I'll tell you. 
That is one of the most chill things. So my sister had a kid in February, and uh, I was looking after it one time when I was over her house, and just letting letting the letting the kid like you lie down and letting the kid kind of just sleep on you is, dude, that is one of the best feelings ever. Like that was with my niece, right? But dude, oh my goodness, yeah, that's the best feeling ever. It's so cool. But Grayson's an absolute chonker. 11 pounds, 2 ounces. That's a big baby. Yeah. Yeah. He's a beast, man. So, alleviate. Let me tell you. Your boy came out. Your boy came out that heavy. I was I was like 10 pounds, 8 ounces or something. I came I came out that heavy. Look at me. You're going to have an absolute chonker of a kid. Get ready. I'm going to be bigger than you. I'm calling it now. Some random guy on the internet. Yeah. They come out that big, dude. You're going to have a big kid. You're 6'4". You were 10 pounds. See what I'm talking about? Grayson's going to be a chonker, man. You better, better get that kid signed up for some basketball, man. He's going to be one heck of a center. That's awesome, man. Congratulations, dude. Must be the freaking best feeling ever. <laughs> this one doesn't want to go transparent. There we go. That's the one that has the transparency on it. Either way, congratulations, man. That's awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. That's awesome, dude. Also, make him like space, please. You know what I, you know what I mean. When do you move by the way? Uh, August. So fortunately, we checked our lease contract with the apartment complex. Uh, it's first last, dude. So August was already paid. For, you know, we got lucky there. August was already paid and uh, the sellers per our agreement leave in July. So they leave in another couple of weeks. So we have all of August to move. So yeah, we'll start moving stuff on the first. A little bit earlier if the sellers decide to vacate. They're, uh, they're moving, so uh, they're moving out. They're moving like the other side of the country long way away okay all right we have the flags ejsa logo serial number an old old glory right there all right save Discovery. the next thing we need we need to go back into the full stack prototype hey access tier 276 month resub thank you we're working on it tessa The next thing we need here is the PLF. MLV payload fairing. PLF master craft file. Save. Get the 18 ton payload out of there. And then I set the route on that as the docking port here. The house is ours, Katra, yeah. The one with the sweet garage, dude. Yep. I have a decoupler in here just as a good payload attachment fitting. I didn't. Not really sure what else we could put or what we should put there, but uh, yeah, that'll work for now. We can reconfigure this if we want to. Um, yeah, that should work with the struts and everything. I never had any. We never had any problems with that. So we'll just. Uh, I don't know why I changed the design. Must have just misclicked it. Okay, save. All right, cool. Now that we have everything divvied up, <coughs> now that we have everything divvied up, we got to figure out how we're going to move these things around. 
Are we moving stuff horizontally? Are we moving it vertically? How is this all working? How's how is this all gonna come together? Freaking payload fairing is three what is it, eleven parts? Yep. I'm not sure if making the root part on the payload fairing backwards facing is a good idea. Hmm. I'll we'll we'll figure that one out. Diagonally. No, 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 no. No, that's no good. We don't want to do that. All right, so we'll just leave that there like that. Now we got to figure out, yeah, we got to figure out how we're going to move this stuff. So we need to look at different transport avenues here. MLV first stage, payload fairing second stage. Perfect. Uh, oh, let me go back into the second stage. Hang on. <clears throat> Vertical is how the thing's gonna go together. <clears throat> but we gotta move them, we gotta move them on trailers and stuff. Just like Freedom, we have to move them on payload transport vehicles. I think the second stage finished file ended up in the main folder here. Which now we gotta go digging through. Second stage, load. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, tourniquet, 45 month resub, thank you. <clears throat> Let's go, come on. Okay, excellent. So we have that. We have our first stage. First stage one did the same thing. Yeah, everything's gonna stay vertical for the most part, guys. Okay, this needs to be in the project areas folder. There we go, it's overwritten, perfect. Okay, so, now I need to go mess with some things. We need to, an important thing to do is to set our vessel hierarchy. <clears throat> that was a real important thing to understand when we were messing with the rocket. How this all goes together is very important. Um, thanks, Ojex. I appreciate that. It's designed to be reused. It has reusable hold downs and everything. That's what those RCS balls are. Uh, and it's designed to come back down, land, and then I can pick it up. And the second stage attaches on primarily on a docking port. And we could pick it up and reuse it. Refill it with the fueling umbilicals there, and yeah. Thanks, man. I'm glad you like it. This is MLV. It doesn't have a name. It's just medium launch vehicle right now. Uh, I'll come up with a good name later. Sequencer is good. All right, save that. And now what we need... Let me think about this for a moment. This is a web of struts in here. The reason why is because it's designed to be super strong, because reuse. Kerbal parts do bend and flex over time. That's why the engine section, one of the 
the part that has the most amount of force put on it from the rocket engines is a web of struts. <laughs> it's a web of struts. That's where the high part count comes from, but it makes it so it doesn't move around. It doesn't drift, doesn't bend. Um, okay, I think we've made a pretty good vehicle here, too, on a, just on a side note. You seen they're investigating the F1? <laughs> the F1 cars after Xiao's crash. What I'm on about... They get the CAD designs over for the flexi floors. Yeah. It is safe. You've saved. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Alright, so... What was I doing? Hierarchy. Yeah. Vessel hierarchy. We have to make sure that that's done correctly. If we don't do vessel hierarchy correctly, we're going to have a bad day. We're going to go to put this rocket together on the pad and it's going to blow up when we try to dock something to it. So I need to go look at the Freedom Rocket real quick and we need to figure out how I had that vessel hierarchy all set up. That's really important. The best way that I can describe how this whole thing goes together uh, is like I have to make sure that when I go to put, for instance, my first stage on the pad, all right? I have to make sure that pad is not docking to first stage because I'm putting my first stage on the launch pad. So first stage has to dock to pad, right? Pretty straightforward stuff. You could do that by setting what type of vehicle it is. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because when I attach second stage, right, do we attach first stage and launch pad to second stage or does my second stage get put on the first stage what's the way to grammatically say that correctly second stage gets put on first stage payload fairing gets put on second stage right which is attached to the first stage which is attached to the pad but remember this is all docking now i want my pad to be reusable so i don't want decouplers we need docking ports to hold everything together right if we do something like this I have to make sure that when we separate from the launch pad, that the rocket is separating from the pad and not the pad separating from the rocket. I have to make sure that we default control to the launch vehicle when we go to when we go to undock, or else I'm going to control the pad and the launch vehicle will just fly off by itself with no and with no autopilot, it won't get very far. Pretty straightforward stuff, right? <coughs> so we got to figure that all out now, and I need to. I'm going to go back and look at one of my older rockets here. Uh, that use a similar that's going to use a similar form of integration to see how that all came together. I'm going to my mission mode save here. It's vessel hierarchy dipo. It's vessel hierarchy is the reason why uh, the Kraken lurks. If you can beat the vessel hierarchy, you can figure anything out in this game. There's all my satellites. There's all the SSTO stuff. Uh. <coughs> Hybrid tech would have saved the SSTO program, unfortunately. It's very, very frustrating. Okay, LV3 smart prototype. Let's load this up here. This is an old rocket. What is this set to? Configure vessel naming. It's set to a probe. Okay. So my first stage should be set to probe. Got it. Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, what about the upper stage? This is LV3 upper stage here. What did we set this thing to? Oh. Oh, I see how I did this. My second stage doesn't have a probe core on it. The probe core is... The probe core is on the, uh, is on the payload fairing. Ah, that's a good way to do that, man. Good job, Pass DJ. Hey, Smoke Deloon, how are you? Hey, 
And then if we go with the thick PLF, there it is with a lander attached to it. Ah, uh, yeah, I see what I did. Ah, uh, that's the PAF that I used. I used the service module. See, this is why we went back and checked. That's also set to probe, huh? That can't be right. That wouldn't be set to probe. Where's this thing's root part? Well, of course, it's got to be in here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. What did I set that to? It's also set to probe. Yeah, smoked, it happens. The root part of the launch pad RJ is the plate that holds the rocket up. My ring that holds the rocket. That's always been root. But something ain't right here. Uh, everything is set as probe, and I know I didn't do that that way. <clears throat> it's set as probe priority 10, which is no, that's not right. I know that isn't right. Um... Where's LV-3's launch pad? Where's that damn launch pad? LV-3 pad 1A crane. LV-3 pad 1A 9. Yeah, see, the root part is just the ring. See the ring? That's always root. Now, what did I set this to? Does it pop up? Yep, everything's set to probe. It doesn't. It doesn't take. We have to. We have to go into the mission mode save here for a second so I can see this correctly. I'm trying to build a replica of the space shuttle, and you're struggling. Yeah, yeah, that's really difficult to do, Smoke Doubloon. My the last version of the space shuttle that I made took me. Hang on. Actually, while we're here, just recover these. This is in the engineering mode save. Just. Out there clogging up the save. Um, yeah, it took me six months to make a high fidelity version. It's building shuttles are building shuttles tough, dude. It's all the complication of building a heavy launch vehicle combined with all the complication of building a reusable orbiting vehicle. It's really, really difficult. I keep landing my Falcon 9 boosters very close to KSC. What's the best method for recovery other than just recovering the vessel? Halo, I don't mean to be vague about this, but the best method for recovering your vehicle is the one that's the easiest, or the best, the best way to recover your vehicle. Does that make any sense? I don't mean to be vague, and it's not to say that I don't know what a good way to do it would be, and I, I'm pretty sure you're asking the, the context of your question is a little bit different, right? Um, you got to figure out what's the easiest, what, what's the way that suits you? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do with the vehicle? You, are you trying to take your vehicle and bring it back to your pad? Where's your pad? Where's the launch pad? Is the launch pad on the pad? Are you trying to bring it to the SBH? Where are you going with it? Because if your launch pad is on the pad hexagonal tile, right? and you land off of the hexagonal tile, a vertical, a type of transport mechanism where your booster stays vertical is gonna be a pain in the butt because then you have to go up that little hill right there. So you'd have to drive it to the place where the shallowest hill is and that's over here. So you, now you'd have to drive all the way over there and then get back to the pad. Where are you landing? What are you planning on doing? What, like, what are you trying to do, right? That Answer those questions in your mind and that will lead you to the best way to do it. It really depends on what you're trying to do, exactly. 
What does the Brimo Gone Rogue save? Uh, that's when Brimo played KSP uh, on stream for fun one time. So Halo, it really depends. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Now, personally, if your if your pad is on a hexagonal tile, right, and you're landing off of the hexagonal tiles, I would want something that grabs the booster, takes it horizontal, and then drives it back to the pad, like what my TDRVs are supposed to do. That would probably be better. But you could try to put it vertical. I want to try to do vertical because I want to try to get my vehicles back on here. I want to try to land every... My expectation is landing the MLVs on this hexagonal plate right there next to the pad. That's the idea. Anyway, let's check out LV3. Let's go over here. Uh, LV3 smart prototype. Let's see if it picks up on the vessel hierarchy in here. Or, yeah, vessel... Check here. Let me take a look. That one's just set as probe. Okay. Okay. Now my second stage, I didn't put a probe core on it. Because the avionics are in the payload fairing. That's actually probably something I'm going to change uh, on MLV as well. So let's go into the thick payload fairing here. That's the payload fairing I use the most. And it's it still has the uh, lander inside of it. What is this set to? It's still set... That's weird. All right. Well, where's where's the launch pad? What are the launch pad? What is the launch pad set to? Lander. Okay. It's set to a lander. Okay. So they were set to probe, but that was set to probe when I tried to load it across the saves. It's just something to take into account there. <clears throat> I don't have a pad yet, but I want a cooler way for recovery to just add more to the mission after landing. I was thinking a flatbed with an arm that lifts up. Yeah, you could do that. If you really wanted to. Sure, why not? All right, now what is the, what's the pad 1A crane set to? hell did I end up putting the probe core on this damn thing? No. No, that can't be right. There had to have been another probe core or something in here. <clears throat> That's set as lander? No. No, 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 no. There has to be a... Is there a probe core in here? I put a probe core in here, didn't I? There's a solar panel. That can't be set as a lander. It has to have been set as a base or something.
Lander is the default designation for the can. Yeah, exactly. Let's check the death trap. What is the death trap set to? <laughs> Ironic. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Ray. 12 month gift sub courtesy of Inkelberg has entered month two. Thanks for the resub, man. Interesting. Interesting. There's the probe core for it. It was set as debris? Why would I set it as debris? Oh, because it's a crewed spacecraft. Yeah, okay. Okay. Dead chat XD. Because it is, yeah, it is a piece of junk, isn't it? That was a bad design. That's still set as probe. Let me back out here. Do you have advanced tweakables on? Yes. Yes, I do. See, now I'm thinking. I must not, I must have configured it after putting it out. Yeah, see, pad 1A crane is set. Crane is set as base. And the pad is set as a lander. And the vehicle, the launch vehicle is set as probe. Let's go look at the pad. This is the pad for LV-3, which is the code name for my free, the Freedom 10 rocket. Let's see. So, like I said, setting this correctly is super important or else it'll, it'll explode. It'll go right to your thighs and then you'll blow up. pad is still in good configuration and if we go over here and we configure vessel name yeah it's set as base base priority 10 and then the pad is set to lander priority 10 okay cool okay Okay, that makes sense. Interesting. It's very, that's very weird, man. Um, I could have sworn there was more to it than this, uh, but it seems like that's what's going on. So it seems like, it, you know, first stage probe, second stage payload fairing probe, crane is set to base, pad is set to lander. I see what this is doing. I get it. Base overrides lander. Probe overrides lander. Base overrides probe. Um, long story short, <clears throat> when I have a payload, when I have the first stage or the second stage attached to the crane, and we put the crane on there, I, I attach rocket to crane and then crane to pad. Right? And then when we undock, it sets back to probe. And then undocking probe from lander. Hang on. Uh, 
I want to get Cam back up. There we go. All right, and then. Debris probe rover lander ship station base. There we go. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Essox, Lucius, 14 month resub. Did you ever change designations mid mission integration? Well, it's very clear, J Speed, that we did it on the, um, we did it with the crane. Why would probe? Debris probe. Probe is the lowest. I gotta look at the payload fairing. What's that payload? That payload fairing can't be set to probe. That makes no sense. Because that means lander overrides probe, right? Base overrides everything. Ship overrides lander. And everything is set to a probe. Once again, fellas, I know this seems kind of boring, but this is... I need to make sure that, you know, when I go to put this vehicle together, it doesn't blow up when we put it on the pad. Yeah, that's... I know it seems kind of gratuitous, but yeah, we yeah we have to... We have to do that. That's kind of important. Let's just look at this second stage. Does this stage have any... No, there's no probe core on that. How old is that hierarchy? It goes back to 23.5, and it's still, it's still true to this day. What are you set to? That's very strange. Hey, Draco. Let's just check the tanker payload fairing. This is for a different variant of the Freedom Rocket that's designed to move fuel into space. What is this thing set to? Makes no sense. Would I manually change it? J Speed, I don't remember doing anything like that. That doesn't make sense in my head. I never. I don't remember changing this stuff around mid flight. I do remember changing the crane to base when we put it out, but I don't ever remember changing any of this stuff, strangely enough. I thought you changed it on the payload during integration. Did I, Loopy? I don't... That doesn't ring a bell. You actually remember me manually doing it? Yes. Because that's how I do it based off of me. What was... Okay, Raga, what was I changing? The crane or the payload? It's a, it's a cyclical thing. JSP, it's cyclical. I always ensured that payloads were changed appropriately. Now, the real key is what would I change them to? I changed them to ship. Did I change them to ship? Is that, was that, what, is that what I do? Ship?
I think we used ship the most. Because the pad is set to lander, right? That's... I got it. The fueling vehicles were set to rover, right? E every vehicle... Every vehicle that docks is set to rover, right? So, fueling vehicles, integration vehicles, they're all set to rover. <clears throat> or probe, right? Actually, probably it was either probe or rover. Either one of those work. The pad is set to lander. And the crane is set to base. So that gives us ship and station. And I wouldn't use station because that doesn't make any sense. Ship. We used ship. Okay, that makes sense. Hey, Bryce, what's going on? That I don't recall. I personally always use base, but I don't remember. Changing to ship sounds right. That sounds correct. That's That vaguely rings a bell. So, let's get out of the mission mode save and we'll send it that way. <clears throat> <coughs> Someone is a few years older than you. Welcome to middle age memory. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean... Chillin' stuck on a bug in my game implementing a quest system. Yeah. It happens, man. You gotta figure it out. Work the problem, right? Alright, I'm gonna give Kerbal a quick restart. Actually, we got 30 minutes until Space News. I might go with, I'm, we might do a little bit more Kerbal today, but who knows. What's after news? I don't know, Loopy. I had fun playing Beam. We might play more Beam, we might play more Kerbal. Or I might just play more Kerbal today. I mean, there is space news. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It really depends on how I'm feeling. I also don't want to push it too much either because COVID, but I should be good. I feel fine, so not too worried about that. Have you done a moon mission? Yeah, I've done plenty of moon missions, Smug Balloon. You've been here for them. <clears throat> Don't forget burgers. Yeah, that's right. Mm, Gee here. Hello, Gee. How are you? How are you doing, my friend? Yeah. Okay. So we need to set this as ship halfway <clears throat> on separation. Yeah, configure vessel naming, set it to ship. The, with this, with this rocket, my second stage has the avionics instead of the payload fairing, but that's okay. It's no problem. I'm almost thinking maybe I shouldn't. Maybe we should put that on the payload fairing. Now would be the time to change it. But I built that forward skirt in a way to... Yeah, I mean, and we've already tested it. We've already tested this this way, so... I'm just trying to think if there's any downsides to keeping it like that. I don't think so. Oh... 
I know why it's like that. I didn't put a probe core on the second stage with my freedom rockets because <clears throat> it'll set it. Yeah, it sets it as debris when it when it docks it. But no, then it's then it's but it's docked to the cranes. That doesn't make any sense. All right, you know what we're you know what we'll do because we're doing this in engineering mode. We'll build it out and then we'll see what the best way is. <clears throat> we'll build it out like this and we'll see if that works. And if it works, that's great. Alabama U man, what's up, man? I had COVID from the 20th through the 30th. Had low fever the first two days, and then a sore throat for seven with a stuffy nose and mild sinus dif discomfort. Was 100% by July 1st. Hope you get well. That's about when I got it, dude. <coughs> yeah, this should work just fine. All right, so let's think about this. How are we gonna make the trucks move this thing around? Okay. Let's go back into my engineering mode master root or root directory. Let's think about this. So the test stand right here. Okay. We were using that. We know that that works. So let me take this and I will save this over here like that in the Aries directory and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, in order to do all the rest of this integration testing, we need to I got to start making a pad. So, let's uh let's do that. Let's see what we got. If I'm remembering right, that umbilical really wasn't doing us any favors. But yeah. Man, that thing looks so strange without the landing legs on it now. <laughs> looks so weird. But that's a much older version of the vehicle. Okay, so... Let's take... Is this in the right spot? Hold on. Let me make sure it's saved into the, into the PA... Uh, PA area. Yep, the test stand is there. Perfect. Okay, so we know that this stand works, so I have it double saved, so let's let's change up the craft file to PA MLV launch pad. MLV launch pad master craft file. This was updated July 6th, 2022. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Cool, save that out. All right, excellent. So we know that this system works for our hold downs. It, it's suitable for what we need. Um, the one thing that we were working on, if I'm remembering correctly, is the umbilical. The umbilical wasn't working exactly how we wanted. There's the sequencer for separation right there. <clears throat> the umbilical was acting strange. Borger. Alright, get rid of all this. That's just for that. Alright, now... 
we're gonna set this as root part and then get rid of the cow controller and the entire thing was tilted huh all right get rid of that and then get rid of that the hold down points are what I'm after these work. We know those can hold up the fully fueled vehicle. I have four points of attachment right there. We know those work. <coughs> so, how do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? Honestly, fellas, I'm thinking just use Freedom's pad. We can use the same thing. It really wouldn't really wouldn't matter. Have we transitioned to hybrid tech pins and only using the docking port in a non-structural fashion? That's an umbilical now, Loopy. Yeah, it's not structural. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't structural with freedom. I don't know why I didn't put these in the cardinal directions like that. But, yeah, that's how it's going to have to be. It still drifted, so I'd say it was kind of structural. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Alright, let me think about this for a second then. Um, the grip pads hold that in place, blah, 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 blah. Uh... Yeah, a fixed um, a fixed umbilical, a fixed docking port might be a better solution. Because that did move, now that I'm remembering right. So let's let's dump that. Save that. And then let's go. First stage. just for funsies. This should just lock into position. Yeah. All right. Because they're both absolute snaps. So that's how that thing is going to go together. Now, where can we put, where can we put our static umbilical? Uh, if we're going to do something like that, where are we going to put it? We do need to, we're going to need to end up changing the, the first stage design a little bit. I think we kind of thought a up and down thing would work. Yeah, the strut all screwed up in there because I merged the craft file, but that's okay. We can't put it there because the hold down point gets in the way, so that's not happening. We could always offset it. Do fuel lines move around? Do fuel lines move around like a hose? Uh, yes and no. They kind of do, but they don't do it in the way that you think they do. If that makes any sense, dude. You know what would be kind of dirty, but it would work, is this. It would just literally copying Freedom's umbilical. It's kind of gross doing it that way, but it, we know it would work.
Yeah, it's kind of gross doing it that way, like I said, but it would work. I was thinking something simple like a docking port on a piston with a fuel line on the docking port. That, yeah, I mean, that, that could work too. We could... I can do something like this, but where? Where is this going to end up? Where does it go? Do we do something like... I hate that that's rotated like that. I absolutely can't stand it. Why did I why did I rotate it 45 degrees like that? So it doesn't line up with cardinals. That's really annoying. So we could put it right here. And then we could have a docking port just kind of sticking out right there. And then this thing could just whoop. But that's where the leg folds out too. The leg could... Yeah, that'll go through it. Nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Honestly, that way, that way works. I mean, it hasn't been tested, but we know the umbilical location being right there works just fine. And the way we were doing it before is just a retraction umbilical. Yeah, this... I'm gonna load this up and we're gonna mess with this real quick. I wanna see, We need. I need to revisit this. I, I don't remember what, I don't remember what we were doing here. We did get this to drift, but how? What did we do? I don't remember. Hey, Ice King. Thanks for the raid, buddy. So this is the configuration that this thing would be in on the pad.
Okay. Is this drifting at all? Yeah, no, it seems pretty straightforward. All right, let's keep filling it up. The crazy thing is, is that the only thing holding this up is four RCS balls on a grip pad, and it actually it's pretty damn stable. I still think we're going to need a vehicle stabilization system, something like this, just in case. Uh, but this does work. All right, so we'd go through a fueling procedure, right? And what were we testing? What did, what, what did I test it? I tested the absolute worst case scenario of undoing the umbilical when the rocket was fully fueled. That's what we did. And it did break it a little bit. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking, fellas. So we, we did this test before. So this test was going in here like this, right? And we would undock this, and the booster would just physically be hanging on the pad, like that. Yeah, that does that does things to the launch pad. It makes the launch pad very uncomfortable. Now, that was locked out, right? And then we tried moving it back into position like this, which will cause a snap dock. What does it do? It did snap it back into position. And now it's not, now it's unhappy. But the real question is, would we ever snap this back into position? No. The umbilical, if it separates when the rocket leaves the pad, No, JSB, this is just a te an old test stand. It's an old test stand with the same hold down points. I'm just looking at something. I, I need to make sure that my interfacing mechanism is working correctly. Yeah, no, I'm going to go with the static umbilical. Discovery, go on it's, yeah, or, uh, yeah. I mean, we could have the umbilical rotate like that if we really wanted to. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. But I'm never going to redock that thing when it's fully fueled. Because theoretically, that should be like the last thing that happens before the vehicle actually leaves the pad. If I have to redock this because the vehicle's free floating on the pad while it's fully fueled, that means something has gone horribly wrong, and reconnecting the umbilical is probably the least of my concerns. So, because that means the rocket fell down into the flame trench which, or down here, which is not where you want your rocket to be. You want your rocket to, in fact, go up off the pad. Funny story. You could add a fuel dump, dump fuel before redocking. Yeah, but if, like I said, if the umbilical is like one of the last things that we do before launch, why would we need a fuel dump? We don't need a fuel dump. And don't get me wrong, I did on the first stage, I put a fuel dump. I have, the, I have ways to dump fuel off that stage if we need to. Um, the hold, if it goes sideways off the pad, the hold down points really prevent it from moving sideways. It'll go, it'll timber off the pad if anything. I think this is just something that'll mess it up. That's just something else that can go wrong. Screw that. Time to head home. Fly safe. Catch you later. All right, Dipo. See you, buddy. Thanks for popping in. Josh with a 66-month resub. How we doing? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I want to get back into Kerbal. More Kerbal. We need to make some progress on the MLV and Project Aries. That's what I'm looking to do today. I'm looking to make a lot of progress. Now, let me hit the save button. Are these things... Is everything here absolute snapped? It is. Oh. Alright, well that should be easy to fix then. Okay. 
so... <coughs> we know that this design works. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to move these into the cardinal positions. Copy them. Because I didn't like that this thing is rotated like that. I'll do the same with the grip pads. Remember we're using we were using the backs of the grip pads. And then they were strutted. Like that. Hey. Hey, don't you do that to me, Kerbal. Come on. Hey! Fine. Jeez. Hey, Bone Sister. How are you? So this needs to go right there, and then you need to go here. Like that. I don't want to work today. It's been stupid busy lately. That's good. It's not a bad problem to have, man. Okay, so now we can get rid of this, get rid of that. I already have, I have copies of that saved everywhere, so. Okay, now let's go back in here. Merge with the first stage. It did that terrific Kerbal glitch where it decides to duplicate the craft file a bunch of times. Let's just make sure that these still line up. They do? Perfect. It's not it's not exact. Uh here. We can I can fix that by setting that to an absolute snap. That should get us pretty lined up. Yep. There we go. Alright, now the umbilical. If we did that right, that means I should be able to use the absolute and I should be able to move this and this docking port should exactly line up. Yep. There we go. Cool. All right. So I'm thinking the best way to do this guys come on you just the docking port. There we go. We're working on the rockets for mission mode would bite. Unlimited power from Maverick, 11 month resub. Thanks, man. That seems like the right move here. 
that's basically what we did with freedom here and that basically just means that I have to move this docking port just up here that's it discovery go at throttle up and then I just need something that's gonna make it look like that thing is attached I'm good, Naslik. How are you today? Hey, Fourth Doctor, one year resub. Roll program complete, pitching down range. <laughs> I'm actually okay with this. This seems pretty good. We'll see how this thing kind of fits together a little bit later. But I do like the idea of setting this thing down first and then docking to it. And that would require a retractable umbilical. But if it's a retractable umbilical, that means we're going to need robotics and the robotics will drift. Let's keep it like this. We're going to keep it simple. We'll keep it simple. We'll keep it simple with a docking port. Okay, so... <clears throat> Can we get away with moving this down at all? No, it's outside of the hold down points. Crap. Now, could we move the hold down points in? No, we can't because the motor's in the way. The nozzles are in the way. Okay, we can't do that. We could put the docking port, and you know, let's put it right there. Banana. That's, I mean, that's where it is on Falcon 9. And that is kind of in between two nozzles there. Hang on. Let's rotate this back here. Can we lock vertical in this? Oh, we can. We can do that in the SPH. Nice. If I set that right there, if we set this right here like this, and then I take the docking port, There's a space in between right there where the nozzles won't hit. So if if the rocket is going to launch, right, we can just any collider? Nope, no colliders. I actually like that. That's the funny thing is is that that is exactly where Falcon 9s are. Is it not possible with an open and closing docking port? That really opens up snap docking, J-Speed. Remember with Condor's pad, when we opened up the ports, if you didn't do it at the right time, and the like the way the colliders and the docking ports attach is very imprecise. Remember, it would cause a lot of crafting strikes. You remember Condor in the desert? Yep. How how crazy can we get with this? Can we do something like this? Now let's see, will the rocket collide at all? It's close, but I don't think so.
engine gimbal. The colliders don't animate like that, Chief. In real life, that may be an issue, but not in Kerbal. Yeah, that's weird. You know what? It's funny that that position works. That's exactly where Falcon 9's fueling umbilical is. It has an oxidizer umbilical here, and then a fueling, a liquid fuel umbilical here. They're at the one and the <laughs> one and the seven o'clock positions. It's interesting that that's just that's the space that I have that works, because it's just coincidence. Because I'm once again we're using a, I have a completely different like uh, I have a totally different engine configuration and stuff, and it just it works works just fine. All right, I think we should go with this. We did end up adding another part to the first stage though, which kind of blows, but. But we did end up taking a part away. Yeah, we only added, we had, yeah, net one part added. Now we just gotta make the changes to the master stage master craft file. So get rid of that. Keep this save. Go into the first stage master craft. And now go in here and then merge the launch pad file. Now what we're going to do Keeps, it keeps saving in the root directory instead of my special directory, which is annoying. Oh no, what's that, Phil? First Vegas E launch VB21 now targeting July 13, 13, 13. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, jeez. So what style pad are you going for? Whatever works the best. It's going to be derived from what works the best what worked the best for previous rockets creeper There's the merged one All right so turn on inner stage nodes on that fairing And now that should line up absolute. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Now, save, because this is the first stage master craft file. We don't want to do anything dumb. So go here. Now take the entire first stage, and we're going to rotate it till that docking port is upright. There. So that was 30 degrees. It was a 30 degree rotation. Now, I get rid of this docking port. And we reattach it over here. And then we take that and we rotate it into position. And now snapping it to absolute should get it to line up perfectly with this docking port right there. Excellent. Now, take the pad pad was just there for a guide and then take the nose cone that we wanted 
and snap it right there and then move it up so it's not clipping with the docking port so that looks all like one piece. Grandparents strut that. That's one part removed off of the fairing which is basically in the hierarchy straight line there. Uh, there's like a six degree separation so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine degrees of separation from the front attachment point to the aft attachment port. That's okay. It's fine. Um, okay. Good. Save. Now, take the first stage, rotate that back into position, and then get rid of this, and then save the master craft file. There. Umbilical is in the right spot. That shouldn't cause any problems. Okay. There's the fueling umbilical. Save that out. Now we gotta go load up the Launchpad Master Craft file. <coughs> now we gotta go load up the Launchpad Master Craft file and then I have to make sure it's saved in the right project areas folder. And then we're good. Then we could start building out the Launchpad. PA MLV Launchpad. Save in project areas. Boom. <sighs> okay. Now I just gotta make this look like it's attached. Space news? Eh, no, it's sooner rather than later. But I really want to make progress here, so yeah, I prefer to just play this until we get to a good save point, which is pretty basically now. And then it doesn't matter but just so we can label it as such. I'll put a fuel line on there. I, I don't think that's gonna screw with the hierarchy too much, but I've had to do this in the past. But it's a good indicator that that is in fact for fuel. Okay, save that. Perfect. And now let's just, just to be absolutely 100% sure, I'm gonna put an engine on that docking port and then we'll put a fuel tank, big fuel tank attached here and then we'll see fuel delivery overlay. It is working. And it does pick up on the fuel line. Cool. Now, the real key is, does it? can we backfill with it? So attach that here and then attach the tank to there. Does that work? Yep, it does. Cool, that picks up on the logic, perfect. I know it seems like I'm taking a lot of time here. Like, why are you spending so much time getting this right? Well. This is where the rocket interfaces to the pad. This is something that you, we really, really need to make sure is doesn't screw up. All right, so there's the start of our launch pad. There's our launch pad flange. That's the attachment piece. This is how the rocket holds on, is held onto the pad. There it is. All right, cool. That's a good stopping point. All right. So the next, when we play Kerbal again, it, it'll either be for after hours tonight, and if I want it, unless I, I want to play Beam. Uh, or it'll be tomorrow. We will work on building out the pad and the fueling umbilicals and the cranes and everything. I'm going to reuse a lot of freedom stuff just because I want to get this thing ready to go. It's better to have this thing up and running. Uh, yeah, it's just better to do that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Back to back to Kerbal here. We are playing Kerbal again tomorrow. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get the video ready for Space News. Um... Let's get let's get the interim video. I take a break now. I eat lunch. 
uh, and we will jump into uh, space news when I get back. But don't worry, I will keep you entertained with a nice video about space. <laughs>